Good morning. You're now listening to Kingston Community Radio, airing on FM 92.5, AM 920, WGHQ, Kingston, New York. This programming is brought to you by our listeners and corporate underwriters who are interested in presenting local community radio. The opinions expressed on this program do not represent those of Pamela Broadcasting or Kingston Community Radio. Listeners are encouraged to send in $10 per month to help bring this program to you. Mail your contributions to Kingston Community Radio, Post Office Box 4364, Kingston, New York, 12402. For more information or to donate online, visit our website at mykcr.org. And good morning. This is Dan Gatiss, starting us out today on a terrific Tuesday with Nina Postupak and Cameron Rylance. Uh, it's Tuesday, November, uh, December 14th, and 36 degrees right now here in Uptown Kingston. And we'll be right back after these messages. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. At Central Hudson, we recognize that some of our customers could use a hand from time to time. We have programs designed to help reduce undue stress, get you back on track, and avoid falling behind on payments. We offer payment assistance options, as well as programs for those who are hearing or speech impaired, hospitalized, or using electrical life support equipment. Learn about all our assistance options at centralhudson.com. This is Nina Postupak. Once again, the WGHQ Happy Christmas Fund is asking you to help the needy this holiday season. For the last 50 years, the WGHQ Happy Christmas Fund has helped less fortunate families have a happier holiday. Look for our collection boxes at the local branches of the Ulster Federal Credit Union, Roundout Savings Bank, the Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union, Ulster Savings Bank, and at Canton Field and Sorbities. Thank you and have a happy Christmas. You're listening to KCR, Kingston Community Radio, WGHQ, 920 on your AM dial, 92.5 FM, and streaming online at mykcr.org, 845-331-9255. Call in, call in, anytime you have an idea, thought, comment, question. Partly cloudy today with a high of 49, and uh, partly cloudy skies early. Tonight, we'll give way to cloudy skies uh, later, and it's a low of 27 tonight, Wednesday, uh, let's see, let's po- pop that open. Uh, cloudy with occasional showers for the afternoon, a high of 44. Winds, uh, <laughs> insignificant. Chance of rain is 50% for Wednesday. And rain showers early with overcast skies uh, on Wednesday night as well. And then um, kind of clearing uh, uh, with overcast skies late. Let's get back to the on air studio right now with Cameron Rylance. Good morning, Cameron. Good morning on a terrific Tuesday. And um, it's not bad. Looks like it might be a little sunny today, warming up. Hoping uh, my co-host Nina's on her way because uh, it's going to be a long morning if you just got to listen to me. But we do have some guests. I'm playing with the wire again, aren't I? I don't know. We have some guests <laughs> to do uh, this morning. Um, uh, Dan Whalen, Boys and Girls Club, is our first guest. And Carl Brown should be our second guest. And then... We followed up with Sue Copenhaver from the Office of the Aging. In the meantime, um, you are stuck with me. So uh, I opened up my Freeman today, which was miraculously delivered on time, which only happens maybe once a week, to see the the, the banner across the top, Dutchess County won't enforce the mask mandate. Oh, it's That's, backwards. It's backwards. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> Let's try it again. Oh, wow, what, did you see it on YouTube? <laughs> Yeah, is this it, thing on? on? Oh, that's yeah. the TV's it's on. on yeah. We're all for Clem this morning. I was talking to the back of my microphone. So if, <laughs> if anyone uh, in Radio Land knows what the microphones are like, there's only one good end to it. And I was speaking into the wrong end. Um, so yeah, a rather bold banner across the top of the paper with uh, Mark Molnero saying Dutchess County won't enforce the new mask mandate. So that, uh, uh, I think it's pretty bold. Uh, it sounds like a 
um, you know, a, a political move. He is uh, has expressed some interest in running for governor. I've heard in the past. So um, he's thrown down the gauntlet. You know, uh, this is to me. This is an open challenge to Governor Hochul, and uh, we'll see uh, see how that how that pans out. Might be some good um, good local press. Because, uh, I mean, you know, Mark is a Republican, I believe. And, um, but, you know, uh, governor being a Democrat, it could be uh, set up some interesting stuff. So, um, boy, it's interesting being in here alone. I haven't had much practice doing that. Oh, you, you, yeah, you've done it quite well sometimes. Yeah, some so, once in a while. But I'll, uh, I'll keep my line open yeah, just there, in there, case. There are a few uh, a little... up, uh, upcoming events I suppose we could uh, get across. Uh, the Wreaths Across America program from the Saugerties VFW Post, uh, 5034. Uh, it's sponsoring a bus trip to Saratoga Cemetery on Saturday the 18th, which is very soon. It's $15 per person. They're leaving from the Senior Center at 10 a.m., return approximately 5 a.m. Uh, I would call quit Bob Howe, uh, 246-8510 for reservations. Uh, uh, don't hesitate. It's uh, right around the corner. So The uh, Saugerties, oh, look at this, a lot of Saugerties stuff. The Saugerties Sports Hall of Fame will resume their tradition of honoring those who have made a significant impact on Saugerties sports history. Um... On Saturday the 19th, April 9th. Oh, this is way off, way, way ahead. But it doesn't matter. April 19th, there's a ceremony. Uh, Pat Coffey, Jay Dodig, Mark Herb, along with Steve, Einer Martin, and Jimmy Spears are being uh, inducted. So th uh, for information, call Mike Hassenbalg, 914-388-2348. Um, well, it's great they have that... Um Set up so far in advance, yeah. uh, everything is kind I know, I can report on, we had a lovely uh, Elks uh, dinner, drive dinner. Excellent, restaurant. excellent. Yeah, okay, what did chili. you serve? It was chili, yes. Was, okay. Uh, yeah. That was made on Sunday, and I know Ann Papillion and... Chili on a chilly night. Yeah, chili on a chilly night. Ann Papillion made the uh, corn muffins. Oh, and boy. And Fern Tietzel, uh made dessert. Yes. And uh, okay. we put together a nice t salad. And um, What was the dessert? It was um, like lemon cake. Like oh, lemon wow. Lemon bun cake. Yeah, it was oh, delicious. Oh, sure. Bun cake. Yeah, Fern's okay. a good baker. I've had the f good fortune of having a bunch of her baked goods over the years. <laughs> it's been nice. Um, but uh, the next one coming up would be the, it's the first, Decem first Monday in December, or uh, January, rather, which I believe is the third. It's right around January 3rd. Good morning. Here oh. comes Nina. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Uh, on the 3rd, and it is, I know it is a um, it's meatloaf. Meatloaf. Oh, potatoes, wonderful. Green bean. <laughs> and, that's the, uh, uh, that's January, I guess, Yes, right? that's January. Yes. Four okay. eight one zero seven five two for reservations and call. Excellent. Got on a list because there's, uh, there's either going to be, Enough or a lot left of whatever. <laughs> you make you, you know, meatloaf. You, meat yeah, pan. right. You already made five yes, when you made one we, pan. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, if you have know, one over, and we make the six, then we don't have it. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, there's sure, there's sure. Not a lot of wiggle room with, when you have like a finite item. You know? Yeah. Uh, when you're cutting a, a you know, this when you have be ten people. You, you, you've probably had overages o uh, over the past, oh, yeah, right? Pretty much all the time, yes. Where do you go with them? Well, uh, we take you know take them home. Sure, uh, sure. Everybody who works. Depending what night of the week is, there's a uh, an organized poker game um, at the lodge, and we try to give away some of them there. Oh, that's many nice. Many times yes, right, sure. we Keep have it in house. many times we've scrambled to um, uh, with the mentor me folks from the mentor me program. Stephanie okay. and oh, that's great. Mother called. Good. Um, and y y y right place, right time. Oh well, I'm heading out. Yeah, I can swing by now. You know, as the person that's nice. Over, Something that's open in the in the evening. Yes, yes someone right. uh, calls a couple yeah. of families. And says, hey, look, we're you know we got stuff coming over. You know, so it, it literally goes from our table to the car to the recipient's family's table. Yeah, so right. It's great. You know? Perfect. Uh, much rather give it away than waste it. You know. Oh, sure. I'd rather sell it, one, because it raises money for our activities. You know, certainly wouldn't want to throw it. Give it away all day, you know, give it away when it's possible. So um, we do do that. So 
Hi, hi, Ms. No, uh, Ms. Poach the Pack. How are you doing? Good morning. I am good, Dan. Thank you. I apologize for being late That's this okay. morning. I was getting Good nervous. morning, Cameron. I was, I was well, that terrific enough. Tuesday, it just, you know, Stop got away from me this you. morning. I just, yeah. Actually, it's funny. I had a, uh, a nice morning. I was almost late, too. Late too. Uh, was, woke up early, crack of dawn, and uh, five th- tossing and turning from 5 o'clock on. I, five th- I might as well get up. I'm not <clears> getting back to so I go out, I was doing some emails, and I heard, I know Ben and my son Ben is working this morning, 7 o'clock, I heard Zogs, and I heard him get up, and I was answering a couple of emails, and uh, he comes downstairs, it was like 5 of, he's like, don't you got the radio this morning? I was like, <gasps> I, I'm like, shoot, I gotta go. 5 of 7? Yeah. My heavens, you were here before 7 o'clock. No, well, maybe, 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 seven maybe my, right my, at 7. My, my, that was pretty, that was pretty, uh... Pretty good right, work. I only lived three blocks away, whatever. So got here, whatever. And because you were there when I was done. But halfway, <laughs> you know, so I walked in at seven oh one. I was thinking about that coming in the car. I just always assume Cameron's going to be on time, and yeah, I'm like, uh, I, uh, uh, what if he, I poor Dan, on, would be all by himself? I, on, <laughs> I usually just run PSAs for a I while. Was you know, at the before light, somebody comes in. But I was sitting on the light at Wall Street, and at dawn, I was like, oh my gosh. My son just reminded me that I had an engagement and I was going to be late to. Uh, which is like complete reverse. You know, like, yeah, like, totally like reversed, right? Father, pr- proud father moment, I guess. You know, like my son is... The responsible one in the respons- family. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of cool. That but, is, uh, absolutely. It was, uh, yeah, it was nice, so... So we have a busy morning. Right? We have um, Boys and Girls Club, Dan Whalen at 7.30. Yes. Uh, and then at 8 o'clock, Carl Brown. Yep. And then 8.30, we have Office of the Office Aging. Of the aging. I know. I have, and I'm Sue trying, always has a lot going on. Get a whole, I, I, for some reason, I don't have Sue's contact numbers. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, I do. I will. Uh, I, I want to make. Sure she's coming? Uh oh. It's something, okay. something, something, anything. three, four, five, six, isn't it? Yeah, that's the office. She's not there yet. Oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, there's, she's, there, there could be a little surprise. But, uh, surprise. Sure, I want to make sure she comes. Maybe Sue here. heard that. I always like, <laughs> I like surprises. Yes, but, um, and then Carl Brown is our middle guest. Yes. Sandwiched between Dan and Sue is Carl Brown. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So busy morning. Yeah, which, which is, is good. Yeah. Uh, we like having great. guests. Yeah. And and I had started off saying, that's quite a, yeah, Dutchess County will enforce you know, the mask Mark mandate. Republican? He is, he, he is. Has some, I've heard he has gubernatorial aspirations. Isn't that a great, I just put gubernatorial aspirations. That's well, he did run for governor uh, once, yeah. but I think he's going to run for Congress. Yeah, I think I know, he's running against that, Delgado, you know, the, but yeah, you never know. The Democratic governor and the Republican yeah. county exec sounds like it could be some uh, headlines over the next few days. About yeah. Some sparring. I think there's some controversy in the respect that the Department of Health is, um, has to enforce this um, as opposed to, I guess, uh, uh, when Cuomo was in office, he had the executive power it was given to him to do these things where um, Governor Hochul doesn't have that. So there's a whole um, the controversy there. Status. Yeah, he was granted that way back when. So well, I, uh, I mean, I understand his reasoning cause, because that, you know, the Dutchess County Health Department, believe me, I'm trying to deal with them right now, getting some water and oh, stuff hard. done. Boy, they are so un- understaffed, like ridiculously really? understaffed. Oh, goodness, yes. Um, so we'll see. That's gonna might be might be interesting. Yeah. So in in the county office building, we've been wearing masks right along, so yeah. that doesn't change too much. And um, I think people I've noticed anyway before the mandate masks. came out, most people if you go into the I grocery stores, yeah, or, people are being very compliant. Yeah, like last Friday. Friday. And we know. Yeah, it's not our first radio here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, Dan. And very unfortunately, true. we went through it in the you know like in the earlier part of uh, well. Last uh, last fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, last uh, Friday, I think it was, Stewart's. I saw a sign on Stewart's. All patrons must wear masks. Must wear masks. Yeah, yeah regardless of and being uh, vaccinated. more stores that's, that, that is, um, you know. Yeah, regardless of whether they have the vaccine or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, my, my thought process is you, you can never be too safe. Yeah, exactly. And you know I'm, what? Uh, i got to get on the Why phone. Why not? Or get on you the know. computer. And, and if you go into New York, definitely take your vaccine card. Because you're going to need it everywhere. Oh, oh yeah, yes, yeah. yes, very true. Into the city. I am. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to get my sign up for my booster. I got to get online and. Oh, do your booster? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I did my booster. Yeah. Um, I would like to just. Uh, I'm sure most people listening already know this, but I would like to publicly express my uh, 
sympathy and wish my thoughts and prayers to uh, Dick White and his family. Yes. Passing yes. former Kingston mayor, mayor of the people, Elks Great family, member, VFW, veteran, all around, you know, firefighter, philanthropist, all around, wonderful man. Great family. I yes, know, absolutely. I know daughter Linda well, and I've met his other daughter. And um, yes, they, yeah, uh, yes, was a true community. Um, you know, an elected official. Mm -hmm. I saw an interesting statistic or interesting fact that um, he was the only two-term Republican mayor in the city of Kingston in the past fifty-seven years. That's a, quite wow. an accomplishment, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought that was very yeah. Telling, I, I didn't realize two, that. I, I didn't realize just two times. Yes, yeah. yes. So I do agree, though. Um, condolences yeah, to his family. Ser services are tomorrow, and uh, as the newly minted uh, ER of the Kingston Elks Lodge 550, I am uh, in charge of the ceremony. The right of uh, there's a Elks have a you know a solemn you know funeral service right. Uh, that we were doing at the end of the wake, at the end of the calling hours with the family. Oh, so you do it at the wake? Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. There's also a, a graveside service as well, but we, you know, choosing to do it the wake. And right. <clears throat> I spoke with Linda Murphy and uh, Bernie Gray and organized it. And um, it's, you know, a little it's a ten minute, you know, little remembrance ceremony. It's very nice. That's very That's nice. Much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And he was a long time Pip, former ER, you know, president, you know, we call of the you know, Elks. You know, exalted ruler, but. Yeah, you know, yep. past PER, you know, past president of a lodge and member, still an active member. So, um, yeah. Great. It'll be a nice help. service. Yes, yes. It's nice and that the Elks do that. Too. Grace DePaula. Oh, yeah, my God. Grace, yes. yeah. That's very sad. Also, she was an Elk, right? Yep, you she was. The Elks. Um, you know, but, you know, so young. You know. Yes. And condolences to her family, yeah, her yeah, three young three children, kids, yeah, her kids, husband. Mario. Yeah. yeah. Super nice family and very, very, very yeah. sad. Yes, yeah, so our condolences also to them. And even uh, Jean DeLuca, who passed away, right? Um, uh, her, I believe the funeral was yesterday. But uh, yeah, her and Vince DeLuca, I mean, were really um, pillars of the community uh, between their business yeah, and their. Vince was, he was 100 when he passed, right? Wasn't he? Was well, close to. If Yeah, yeah, very close very to. Very close to. Yeah. Him. Centennial yep. mark. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So condolences to the Luca family. So uh, busy week at the um, county, Cameron. We have good busy or bad busy. Good busy. We have um, so uh, Judge McGinty, Sarah McGinty, uh, was instrumental in putting together when she um, we first started it when she first became. Um, the circuit court judge, but then COVID came and uh, it kind of took a little bit longer than we anticipated, but she has done a whole exhibit up in her courtroom for Sojourner Truth. And we partnered with her on that exhibit and helped her, but she was instrumental and she really put the whole exhibit together. So today she is doing a um, ceremony presentation and opening of the exhibit. But if you're familiar with Sarah's Court, it's a small court. It's a small courtroom, so forth. So it's actually going to, ha going to happen over in family court. So... Um, Quite a few judges are coming down from Albany. There will be um, a display of some of our archival holdings that pertain to um, Sojourner Truth. One um, document which really um, is very powerful and really speaks to um, the, what slavery was about back in that time is um, Solomon Gidney's inventory. And on that inventory is listed cows, horses, um, wood, books, and Sojourner Truth. So she was just like the, part of the yes, oh yes. My God. So she it was really is a very inventory. powerful document. Oh, and but then, um, yeah, the bond. Was it referred back to her original name? It or? was. Yes, right. Yes. So you know the yes. connection. Yes. I just noticed, uh, yeah, we were down to uh, along River Road. Um, and when you come up River Road, then you make the turn the right to go back to Kingston. And right there is where she was a slave. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you're Amazing. absolutely correct. It's right there. Yeah. Wow. Right there. That's yeah. the where the property was. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That should be, could, there should be a marker there. There is. Oh, That's is why it? I know. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> now, um, this where is this? So it's going to be held at family court, actually, and um, – We'll bring the documents. Uh, she will have uh, the portrait that was done by, and oh, 
her name always escapes me from the YMCA Farm Project and the students that mm -hmm. um, were instrumental in that. Oh, in the mural of the mural. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. That will be on display, and then um, in addition to that, the, um, she'll do a PowerPoint presentation. So it is, it's, it's an exciting afternoon um, here in Ulster County, and we're excited to have the judges from Olney come down. Yeah. And then at lunchtime, Paul O'Neill is doing a presentation. And anyone that knows Paul, Paul's just an amazing, yeah, uh, yeah amazing individual. And, you know, a shout-out to Taylor Brook from our office who really worked hard with um, Judge McGinty to put this whole set, uh, exhibit together. So um, very exciting. And now I believe Senator Hinchy um, and his subwoman Kevin Cahill uh, have uh, started the legislation to um, have Sojourner Truth Day made oh, a legal fun. holiday here in New York oh, State. In New York yeah, State. which is fantastic. Yeah, that is absolutely. really, really yeah. righteous. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the display will be in, in Judge McGinty's? Yeah, in Surrogate's uh, Court. Okay. Yeah, on the is third floor. Will be open to the public? Uh, surrogate's Court. Okay. Yeah, third floor, Surrogate's Court. I believe so. I believe okay. that the public could go in and see it. And then why did she put this together? Just to raise awareness or to further, you know, uh, suffrage yeah. or really to academia? Yeah, whatever, raise or? awareness. Yes, I believe that was really the driving force behind it. And um, then it started to take a life of its own. And uh, Heidi, you know, Heidi spoke about the um, youth group that really started um, to get involved and so forth. And one thing led to another. So, uh, yeah. Remarkable, uh, remarkable how one thought, and I've seen this so many times in county mm -hmm. government, like one small thought, two people sitting at a table, one person coming up with an idea, and you just throw it out there, and how it just grows, and um, what an accomplishment to Judge McGinty, and uh, really to uh, the county, uh, to have this exhibit in the county office. It's building. inspiring to, it uh, to see that um, a, a good idea can really blossom. It's really, really inspiring. Um, and luckily, I guess we have quite a lot of uh, documentation for Sojourner Truth, which isn't always the case. Yes, and you know, a lot of the documentation um, is not coming out of Ulster County. Um, Judge McKinty did quite a bit of research and really pulled from so many different areas, which again, you know, it's amazing once you start looking and once you start exploring and you have to have uh, one thing i've learned with anything um i don't know whether it's in county government or you probably have seen it numerous times um you have to have that person that has that passion to accomplish something that has that driving force that motivation that excitement that gets everybody else involved and uh in this case it was judge mcginty but you see it all the time with different things that you do so um great day in ulster county today yeah, it's good. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that this afternoon at 2 o'clock over at um, Family Court. And unfortunately with COVID, everything is so restrictive anymore and difficult to open to everyone. But um, I believe she's doing a live stream of it. So. I was going to say it'll be filmed or something somehow. Yeah, right? yes, yes. So. so up on the third floor of Surrogate's Court, if you wanted to see the exhibit afterwards, um, you're able to visit. Yes. Good. Yeah, yep. So... Um, yeah, very, uh, and hopefully maybe at some point we'll be able to do in the spring an open house or something for it. Uh, just some well, yeah, well, hopefully now, this new restricting uh, everybody. This new mandate will only be till you know January fifteenth, and hopefully there's no surge of oh, I hope COVID not patients and hospitals. I, mean, I hope and, not. You know the whole mess again. Uh, so we'll see. I'm just hoping my March trip to Italy isn't. Hopes I countries know. don't start, start shutting down, down again. I know, I know. We got to bump up that uh, that percentage of uh, vaccinated yeah. people. We well, got to so bump it, that up. It it's only sixty seven percent. It would be other countries or whatever. That I'm worried about, you know. But I think they they show it, has, it was proven that like those big massive lockdowns really did nothing to stop the spread you know countries that didn't lock down that had the same virtually the same infection rates as countries that did lock down so mm -hmm. and they didn't suffer the economic uh, hardships. hardships and the social you know there's still psychological effects rippling through our society oh from absolutely yes this. and now with you know new mandates and surges and you know omicron and it's I think it's becoming more overwhelming now, tell you the truth. Yeah, I think in the, the beginning, routine. everybody rallied together, and we pulled together to get through it, and then the vaccine came, and we thought, oh, hey, this is great. 
Um, and then the controversy then it, with the vaccine. And then um, the can you different imagine, variants. Yeah, and, could, can you imagine what it would be like if we didn't have that vaccine? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What, would we, what would we be going through? Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, uh, it could be worse. You could have had your life lost or family members lost in those tornadoes and the storms in the Midwest. Oh. Unbelievable. Show, Horrific. You know, the news the other night showing, like, I imagine a drone or helicopter, aerial footage of not of way. It looks like they're filming a garbage dump, you know, like, you know, like big, huge Staten Island, you know. Is, yeah. mm-hmm. The debris yes. covers everything. You, can, you know, you can barely discern where roads are only because of twisted, mangled tree stumps. You know, other than that, you know, there's no telephone poles. There's no. I was, uh, I was just completely flummoxed by how that candle factory fell yes because all you see is the 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 uh the girders from, yeah well there's nothing else there the roof panels and there's wall all ripped off all and, gone you know, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's unbelievable and then uh, you, you know you're lucky enough to survive and you know the hardship of you know the the light loss of life and your friends and family, but just losing everything, the devastation, and I, I, I can't uh, fa- I can't wrap my head around not that. You know? No, I can't either. You know, I, I, sadly, you know, I knew a few people growing up who had like house fires or other disasters that have lost their you know clothes everything. on their back. You know, poor Bernie Herzog's. You know, Bernie Herzog's works in the lumber department. He lived, you know, that that sad that fire in the town of Ulster where the gentleman ended up dying. Very sad. Right. But Bernie, I guess, lived next door. He had oh, the really? apartment next door or something and lost everything. He, like, I guess, you know, the Jordans helped, you know, asked around and found him a place to live very quickly. And I know that, you know, the, you know, the staff took up a collection and stuff. Or but Yeah, no harm. He's at work and, he, you know, everything was going, you know, while you're at work. You know, it I have my everything. car and my clothes. That's it, you know. Yeah. Can't imagine. No, I but can't for, either. you know, a whole city to be like that. Oh, my God. Plus, there's no heat, no electricity, yeah. no running water. I mean, More than one city. Yeah, many. Yes. Yeah, I, I, many. I, we're concentrating on the Yeah, my, my son-in-law lives in Lexington, and luckily it didn't go that far. But it was multiple states and multiple yeah. storms and yeah, yeah. There were multiple mm-hmm. cyclone you know, events. Western Kentucky was oh, just man. devastated. Yeah. Um, there are many, many ways of contributing to the... Uh, uh, you know, there's, you know, in the news and uh, yeah. in various articles, there are very m- many legitimate yeah. uh, ways of contributing to uh, the families and yes. uh, and I'm sure there's going to be scams out there, folks. So if people, uh, oh, yeah. I'm from the Salvation Army and I'm calling oh, to yeah, collect right. money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, please. That's I can only imagine that there's probably ready scammers trying to angle towards that. So yeah, we looked and it took a few minutes to make sure that we were actually well, looking I mean, just, at a legitimate one. I'm sure, like just the National Red Cross or, uh, you know, um, through FEMA, Salvation Army, Salvation Army. Yeah, you know, there are the you know the con- you know whatever. Yes. Yeah. If you see search search, search it out, I met and you know. Try to make sure it's a legitimate site. Yeah, yeah. But it, don't. Uh, yeah, usually, geez. you can tell. You know, if you, people start hitting up your emails or calling looking for donations, that's probably scams. So right. Don't do right. it. Yeah. Right. If you have to reach out, yeah. that's or, that you better. Know, even through your church. Better, I mean, I'm sure. Right. You know, yes. every religion, yes. you know, has. Yes. Um, you know, national synods and stuff, so they can, you know, and what better way to help local people <laughs> is through, you know, through the, uh, you know, the. Kentucky Methodist Baptist churches. Church or whatever yeah, right. that was affected. Right. Sure. You know, they can, you know, be, they're right there, boots on the ground, people that, you know, are vested. So, very sad. It um, is extremely sad. Uh, what's sad is the uh, New York Giants. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> New York Giants, New York Jets, yeah, uh, New I'm, York Islanders, yeah, you name you know, it. <laughs> I'm hoping uh, the XFL was, was starting up again next year, right? And, right. Uh, I Maybe know. New, one of the, the New York Guardians can give us some decent football to watch instead of the Jets and the Giants. I, um, and my household is very painful because um, I'll be in the kitchen cooking dinner, and all, and all I hear is, I can't believe this. JV football. Why were you even watching this? But Nina, come in and look at this. Yeah. Look at this replay. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, why are you doing this? You, you, you're just aggravating yourself. Turn the channel. Put stick, on another game. Stick, that's what being a fan is, right? Yeah. you got to stick to it. Absolutely. Stick so. 
So, but next year is another year. Yeah, well, Joe Judge has a lot of faith in his team, so we'll see. Well, he talks a good talk, but he's yeah. not walking the walk. That's no, he sure sure. isn't, so we'll uh, see what happens there. He's got to go. The manager's got to go, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, so, look, we've got to go to break. So uh, we'll be back. Thank you, Cameron Rylance, Nina Postjapak. Thank you very, very much for bringing us through to 730. And uh, it is Tuesday, December 14th, and uh, 34 degrees right now here in Uptown Kingston. We'll be right back after these messages. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. At Central Hudson, we recognize that some of our customers could use a hand from time to time. We have programs designed to help reduce undue stress, get you back on track, and avoid falling behind on payments. We offer payment assistance options, as well as programs for those who are hearing or speech impaired, hospitalized, or using electrical life support equipment. Learn about all our assistance options at centralhudson.com. Do you know who that is? Who's that? It could be a clever thief impersonating Central Hudson, asking for your personal or account information, or an immediate bill payment. Beware of scam artists that can target you by telephone, email, or in person. Don't provide personal information to callers or open email attachments. Ask to see ID. If you're ever uncertain about an inquiry, contact us. Don't fall victim to a sinister scheme. This is Cameron Rylands. Many families in our area will not have a happy holiday, and the WGHQ Happy Christmas Fund will help them. We are asking for your contribution to purchase children's clothes, toys, and food for seniors. You can drop off your contribution at the Boyce Brothers Dairy Milk House on O'Neill Street in Kingston. Thank you. You're with us here at KCR, Kingston Community Radio, AM 920 and 92.5 FM, 732 AM, 34 degrees on this Tuesday, December 14th, and uh, it's going to be partly cloudy today with a high of 49, quite a nice day. And uh, tonight, partly cloudy skies will give way to way cloudy skies later in the overnight, and a low of 27. And that's going to bring us a few occasional showers later in the afternoon on Wednesday, a high of 44. And uh, rain showers early um, on Wednesday night uh, with overcast skies later on. Um, chance of rain is 50% also for Wednesday night. Thursday, quite cloudy, near record high temperatures, a high of 57. And um, mostly cloudy skies early will become partly cloudy late Thursday night. Um, and uh, there you go. This upcoming portion of Kingston Community Radio is brought to you by Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union, 1099 Morton Boulevard in Kingston. And let's get back to the on-air studio with Nina Postchapak and Cameron Rylance. Welcome back. And we are back. And yes. uh, I believe Dan indicated that we have our guest, uh, Dan Whalen, on the line. Is that true? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dan. How are you? Great, great. Even better, let me tell you, Cam, even better that I get to talk to Nina this morning and I get to see her later. Uh, uh, yeah, we do. A, uh, <laughs> Twice what? in one day. Is there a board meeting Twice in something? one day, Nina. Well, tell them what, why, Dan. What's our exciting event today? Yeah, so uh, today uh, for the Kingston Club, we have our Christmas dinner, uh, which is uh, uh, just a huge, huge fun night for the kids that they really look forward to all year. Uh, we have a huge catering by, uh, by ShopRite. Um, you know, we'll have games, music, um, your kids will get there, you know, every year, uh, BSN Sports, uh, donates club hoodies. Um, and yeah, we just, I mean, it's a night everyone looks forward to. It's a ton of fun. And, uh, you know, a lot of our board members come and, and volunteers and we just have a great, great day together for the holidays. It's, I have to say, um, it's probably one of the nicest events that um, the board is involved in. 
Um, and I have to say a shout out to ShopRite. They do an absolutely really? amazing job. Oh, if they're, you're familiar with the gym at the um, club, it's like along one wall of the gym is every type of food imaginable. Huge, huge table with all types of cookies and treats. And um, it's just amazing what ShopRite used to do. You make sure you cook, keep the cookies and treats away until every kid, kid hits gets the there. They hit the vegetable food. table, right? They do, yeah. they do. They get them at the end, but it's great. I mean, everyone goes home with food. Everyone goes home with snacks. That's it's fantastic. Really, really fun night. So now really sh- look forward to later. Shoprite has really good food. I mean, like they're hot oh, food. Oh, amazing! And, you know, they they, got, they make sushi right there. That's fantastic. So now, yeah. now is um someone involved with uh, uh, like management of Shoprite part of the club or anything? Uh, yeah, one of our board members is uh, one of the directors of the the hot uh, food services, um, Augie Reyes Colon. Um, and he really, he's instrumental in our steak and breakfast dinner as well as this event. I know, I mean, me and Augie's probably done this for, I mean, before I got here, so it's got to be eight years he's been involved. Wow, that's great. Yes, and before um, ShopRite was involved and before Augie was involved, the um, members of the board used to cook the dinner. So the kids have really moved Boy, up in the world. We used to yeah, make sauce lucky. and meatballs and pasta and, uh, yeah, and maybe some brownies. But, yeah, they've really moved up in the world, so we're really appreciative of what ShopRite does. No, you, yeah, you, you, Nina, you know, I, heard, I heard before ShopRite took it, it was Elio's Pizzas. pretty close too dan you got that right um now you said something about uh some other uh local sponsors right bsn which actually our listeners know that's the former uh, anaconda and the stoke family Um, yes they bought the anaconda yes uh and they still operate out of the same uh, building but that's a national company and also uh, all our drinks are donated by liberty coca-cola excellent nice Yes, and it's really great. Um, like Dan said, um, each of the uh, kids of the club uh, walk away with a sweatshirt from BSN, which is really nice. nice. Yeah, I mean, really. Um, now, uh, and br- bringing home the leftovers isn't too shabby either. That's right. Um, no, for sure. And uh, the sweatshirts are great. I mean, our kids love our club hoodies. I mean, you know, we're a family, and you know, people they love it. You'll you'll see all year throughout the throughout the year. Um, the kids are always just wearing them. I, mean, I do. Keep your eye out next couple of weeks. Well, they're nice and fresh. That's great. What? Um, okay. How many kids do you expect to be celebrating tonight? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always a wild card. I would say somewhere between 80 to 100 kids. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a full a house. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Lots of energy in that gym. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. And I got to say, too, one of the coolest things that I know, Nina, we've kind of evolved over the last couple of years with our new staffing is that our um, um, two of our staff, um, Ann Chris Warren and uh, Lindsey Quick, will be there. And they just do a great job of doing games, contests, prizes, and just keeping the kids engaged, keeping the energy up, but also constructively engaged. Yeah, Good. very, very true. Yeah, definitely. Great, great night. Now, now is Santa going to make an appearance? No, no, no Santa. unless no Sam, you want to, you know, call me after, and you that way you want to jump on that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I never just shaved. Sorry, we sorry I just, that I just shaved. Some year, right? <laughs> yeah, good. I mean, cause there are are they little? No, the kids aren't that little. Oh. In the club. No, no, yeah, they're they're kid, your your customers are older, yeah. right? Well, we yep. have what's uh, we have eight year old. I don't know. I yeah. does this day and yep. age, I think after they hit six, I don't yeah, know. Santa's j- not kids too, are, kids, <laughs> kids are, are too smart. Days. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, 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 Nina. Right now, I am looking at um, um, our. Um, I'm home. I didn't get to take off for club yet, and you know it's today is our elf on the shelf's birthday, and she is celebrating. Oh, there you go. Uh, there you good. go. That's good. It is great. You always have Santa in your heart, no matter what age you are. So what else is new at the club these days, Dan? What's going on? It, it, um, pretty well, soon. Yeah. Yeah. There's a- yeah, it's, you know, it's just been a busy, 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 busy time. Um, you know, with this Christmas Center last week, we did Saugerty's Christmas dinner. You know, we're, we're helping people that want to adopt families, you know, that, you know, for toys. You know, we're, we're coordinating all that. Get, you know, our staff is out shopping and, and finding the things that the, that the families need. Um, and then just in general, it's a busy time. You know, we're, we're full speed. We had a teen night on Friday. We had a Grinch Christmas party for the kids with a Grinch theme contest, games. Kids won a bunch of prizes. There's probably about uh, 50, 60 kids. Um, yeah, uh, 7 to 10 on a Friday night, which is, you know, what we love to do. It's one of my favorite um, aspects of our programming. But, you know, we, we get a bunch of food. Joey Gans and the cooking crew uh, made all the made all the food for the event, for, for the teen night. Oh, so it was, it was really just a cool night. Um so yeah, I mean that was great. Oh, absolutely. You have these scheduled regularly, right? 
Joe? Yeah, yep, yep, monthly. Monthly right now, um, and then also in January we're aiming to, uh, we'll be open on weekends, on Saturdays. We want we kind of wanted to jump up and, and get started a little bit sooner, but with the way that all the holidays fall, it's all on the weekend. Yeah, so the we weekend, yeah, yeah. January is only a couple weeks away, so that's scary. It is scary. Yeah. And then, like you said, with the two holidays, this, this is gonna, the next two weeks are going to fly by, so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Cameron, yeah, it, uh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. yeah. So Cameron opened the newspaper, the Freeman, and he has an article that really um, impacts the Boys and Girls Club. Hopefully so it will yeah. be impacting. Yeah, yeah, the brothers at Bard um, got the eleven million dollar grant from the NBA Foundation. Have, did you? Are you aware? Have you heard about that? Yeah, I saw that. I sent Dario a note uh, yesterday. I um, probably connect with them today at some point. But um, yeah, it's great for them. I mean, it, it's just a great. It's a great program. Um, you know, it's rooted, um, you know, again, like, you know, I've said before, and this Brothers of Bard actually started at the Boys and Girls Club in Kingston. And, you know, those guys just do a phenomenal job. They support our kids. They support all, all kids that fall in line with, you know, their mission. It's now, great to see. Well, if you, if, if you don't mind, just uh, descri- uh, describe their mission and exactly what they're doing. I got turned on to this organization this summer. I met several kids that were counselor, camp counselors that were part of Brothers at Bard. So uh, why don't you describe a little bit more formally what, they do. Yeah, I mean, Brothers at Bard really kind of digs into uh, mentorship um, of young uh, men of color, and and they really kind of try to be that big brother, that mentor to bring them through. They're uh, they're actively in Kingston High School, so they have access to you know during the day keep me checking in on them, make sure they're online, you know those types of things. <clears throat> but I mean, it's really just a it, it's a great mentorship program to help guide kids from all over. Do you know how many of your kids have been involved or are involved? With the program? No, no, I don't. Uh, like I said, Cam. So, so that's in the, uh, brothers. Bud moved from the club. It's not in the club anymore. Oh, okay. So it's been at the high, it's been at the high school for probably about four, four or five years. Oh, so okay, um, okay. those guys are great. We check in every once in a while, and I know that some of our kids, some of our kids go there uh, the other day. But it's really not. Um, I don't have all that information. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, you said in January you're going to be opening up on Saturdays. Is that just for the winter? Or is that hopefully going to be year round? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what the population demands. You know, uh, a lot of things change. We're definitely going to go through the winter and, and you know, into the spring. Uh, we're looking to be open 12 to 4 on Saturdays for, uh, for, for teens only to really target that group that's, that, you know, idle hands. You know, they're wandering the neighborhood. They need yeah. something to do. Um, you know, but I'm really hoping that as long as we can, we can uh, build it uh, and we have, you know, the support that we, we seem to have right now uh, uh, staffing-wise, you know, I'm really looking for this to be, yes, the club will be open, and we're bringing some staff in for it to be open, but I want targeted activities. Um, you know, let's get down to, um, we'll talk to uh, Dave Amato at Old Savannah and talk about getting the uh, kids down to, you know, learn how to ice skate, uh, you know, at the rink that they have out there, yeah. you know, maybe take kids bowling, you know, doing all those types of things. We want to get the kids moving and do activities, not just be open. That's a great idea. So it's not just coming to the club and hanging out from 12 to 4, which is great and wonderful, safe place, positive um, atmosphere, but also to allow them to enjoy other activities throughout the community. That's, yeah. That's a po- Yeah, an, that's great. A, with an organized, you know, trip yes. type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so we're really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, it's just it's something that we've, we've been wanting to do. I know Nina's board's been want, pushing for it for a long time, and we're finally at that spot. You know, again, part of the, part of the reason for this is, you know, some of the recent support we've received. One of the things that pushed us over the edge here, um, you know, is um, the support that we received on the um, teen gun violence initiative um, through uh, Senator Hinchy. What exactly did, was that money for? Um, you know, uh, programming to run programs to you know. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we talked about that um, last month or the month before. Um, um, it was uh, yes, it, it's it's money targeted to kind of help to, to help the, the the issues that the state and in the country is having in inner city areas um, uh, with the spike in, t- in teen gun violence. To get offer alternatives than hanging around and getting into trouble. Yeah. Right, I mean, that's that that yeah. right? that, 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 So that's our base. That's our role. Yes. Okay. So, so, yeah. I don't, like you said, it's to help combat idle hands. You know, tools. Yep. Of the exactly. That's cool. Now, I, 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 when I listen to you, you know, to me that sounds like a good volunteer or a, a, you know a a, a fundraising, not fundraising, but um, uh, people in the community who may want to donate. Uh, you know, uh, or someone who may have a passion, you know, rather than just saying, oh, I want to give, you know, 100 bucks to the Boys and Girls Club, you can earmark it for activities, right? You know, hey, well, 
Sure. You know, yeah, someone absolutely. that's an avid ice There's skater. A lot, you know, Cam, as, as we build the program, right, you're going to need support. Um, and, you know, anytime you, anyone wants to sponsor a trip or something like that, that, that that's certainly helpful. Yeah. Um, as well as I'm um, working, going to try to work to figure out um, a food program for that day too. So you know. Um, yeah, you know, sure bo- like a bowling league, too. you know. Sp- you know, help sponsor it. You know, uh, you know, bring a kid bowling day or something like that. You know, to, yeah. for listeners. Yep. You know, just trying to be creative, and you know, if you wanted wanted to help somehow, rather than just you know, write a check, you know, right, organize an activity or, or, if or your something. Time is you know, very busy. Like I said too, any any businesses that can add to it, you you know, food, we just talk one avenue food wise, but like you said, you know, you know, bowling, movies, you know, different. There's so many different things that go on in our community, yeah, in our county. We want to make sure that our kids uh, have access and get to see them. Yeah, 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 no doubt. You yeah, know, that's a really great point. It's a um, wonderful way to help the club and. Do it, especially if you're manner. right. And if you um, say you have a deli or say you have a restaurant where you can um, maybe do a pizza after they go bowling type of um, event and sponsor the pizzas afterwards, um, it really uh, is helpful to the club and um, it's a way for you to give back. So, absolutely, in a meaningful yeah, way, a yeah, idea. yeah, definitely, that's for sure. So, um, Dan, now. Um, during Christmas break, how does the club work at that point? Are you open or are you closed, or what do you do during the Christmas when, break? When yeah, that's a that's a that's a great question. This year was a, is a really really tricky and difficult year, uh, just with the way the holidays fall. So I um, mean, we are typically just open all the way through, uh, but with the holiday being on a Saturday, we, uh, right? You have to honor that holiday for staff. So so we are open. Um, any non-holiday, the following Monday, we were open after Christmas, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, right? Because Monday is the, right. is the Christmas honor for uh, for it being there. And the same thing with the, with, uh, the um, um, New Year, the right. following Monday, the club will be closed. So those two Mondays, the club will be closed uh, for staff to be able to uh, observe their holidays. Great. That's but great. But aside for that, we're open, and we'll be open on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 o'clock, or 9 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Yeah, that was good. What, when does school cl- uh, close before Christmas? Like, wh- when's the last day? Wednesday, 23rd. Thursday. Third. Which would be Thursday's Thursday is the last day of school. So Friday's off. Friday starts to break. It's Christmas Eve. Yep. Oh, Friday's Christmas yep. Eve. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Ay. Yeah. Christmas Day is. I gotta, get my, I gotta get my house cleaned. I, I committed to having, <laughs> the, having the family over. <laughs> it's uh, coming sooner I than know, you think. I know. I know. Me and my si- my sister and I flipped the coin. We were on the phone and we flipped the coin. I could have fibbed and but said you, it was him. Oh, but you I was honest it. and I let her. I didn't let her win. She won. And I, I you lost. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I digress. I'm sorry, Dan. Yeah, so, and you and you you cleaned it up just for in the next four hours for everyone else to mess it up. That's right. Yeah, that's the truth. Do all the dishes and everything. Got to start with everything clean. Um, Very true. And then with the new year coming, right? All um, there's some new programs in the um, winter month. The coming after the first of the year, Dan. Am I right there? Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're waiting to hear on a couple of things. I'll want to. I'll wait. You know, be 100. percent um, You know that everything's locked in. That I right. believe will be. But I'll probably have some updates on, on new programs in new year on the next month. Great. That's great. Cool. And what else, Dan, do you want to let people know about that's happening or that they should be aware of? Maybe some contact information. Poinsettias? Uh, do, oh, poinsettias are they available? Beautiful. Or they, they're all done. gone? Oh. I, I, I'm Christmas. speaking for Dan, but I believe they're done, right, Dan? They are gone. Gone. Was they that? were beautiful. I have to say, this year, every year they are, but this year, uh, uh, exceptional. They were Was beautiful. that a successful uh, fundraiser for you guys? Yeah, yep, yep. Um, obviously, it's always a positive. Um, and, you know, people just love the poinsettias. So, yes, yes, we, we, it's, it's positive for us. Not one of our bigger ones, but people love them, and it's, it's great. I tell you what, my um, Herzog's moved my son from the paint department to garden last week. He's been there all last week. He's there all this week. Your uh, Boys and Girls Club trees are flying off the shelf. They literally, hey. they can't, fast as they come in, they're going out the door. So, hopefully, that'll be uh, successful. And people love yeah, that no, stand straight system. Yes. Oh, for sure. And well, I mean, I know I was down there to get my tree a couple Sundays ago, and, and I think they said they said we sold a couple hundred trees today. Like we oh, don't even know. Y- yeah, so. they got fifty in the other morning, and they were gone by like noon. Yeah, they were they're yeah. flying. Yeah, it's literally one of the most popular places in the uh, in the area. Yeah, you get yeah. to get trees. It's close. The region, you know, yeah. it's it's yeah. convenient. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they got the stand trees. And, and you know, with that said too, Cam, you know, you see, it's great that they do that with the trees for us. But uh, you know, Herzog is one of our biggest supporters, yes. and, and they're just what they do for us is monumental. Um, you know, through um, 
through a through auction items and um and and these Christmas trees and anything we ever need. Um, the Herzog is all over it, and just in general, the Jordan family uh, personally would support physically the club and help with our you know uh, uh, Brad Jordan's on our board, and he's you know one of the most active involved people. Yep, and everything. Very true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the, the Jordan family throughout the community. Extremely generous family. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's for uh, sure. A, f- a funny, if, if I may digress for a moment. Um, sure. Uh, my son's helping some gentleman tie a tree up to the roof of his car, like a little sedan, no rack, no, just like the roof of his car. And they have like that twine there. And he's like, you know, it says right, you know, they're, the yard, your employees aren't really responsible for, you know, securing the tree to your vehicle. But he was, I guess it was slow and needed help. So. Ben's tying it on. He's like, oh, where are you going? He's like, Brooklyn. <laughs> Ben's like, what? He goes, yeah, I'm getting on the three right now. He goes, yo, buddy, we got to get some more string here. So we like tied the front and the back. He's like, yeah, I, I tied it the best I could. And he's a Boy Scout. He knows the knots. But uh, yeah. That's so, funny, Brooklyn. Yeah, going back to Brooklyn. So good luck. He's Hopefully it made it past the Tappan Z or, you know, Gosh. whatever, far away. That is um, funny. But anyhow, I'm sorry. I don't mean to take away your time, Dan, but I thought that was fun. No, no, that's great. That's great. <laughs> uh, now, when is the Sorgatis Christmas party, or did has that happened? Christmas was last week for Sorgatis. Last week for Sorgatis. And um, where does that food come from, Dan? Uh, Mirabella's. It's donated from uh, Brennan Monio and the team at uh, Mirabella's. Nice. Oh, that's Excellent. very generous Good to him food, also. Yes. Yeah. Now, since yeah. some of that, a lot of that school-based, uh, is there a programming available during the school break up there? Um, you mean for our school sites? Yes. Yeah. So, so all kids in the sites are are, are members of clubs, so they can come to the main club should, should they need uh, a place to go. Okay. Excellent. So, and yeah. uh, they'll be open the same hours as the Kingston Club on um, during school break, during Christmas break. So, so is likely open. It was so I should say like so will be open eight to six. Okay. Oh, that's cool. All day. Great. That's cool. Yeah. No. No. And things are busy up there too, right, Dan? So it's busy everywhere. I mean, we're great. We're, we're you know we're up to full capacity, full speed, full energy. You know, we've been doing a lot of programs, doing a lot of mixing. So like like I said, there are team night in Kingston, but we uh, brought uh, kids down from Sorgatis as well. We've been running like we have our we started our uh, club harmony group, which is a singing group. The kids get voice lessons every week, um, and they perform uh, four times in the last month. And that's like, again a combination of Kingston and Sorgatis kids. So we've been doing a lot of that lately, and we're and, you know we're finally getting to a point where we have a staffing that we can do that, and that's you know speaks volumes to what this community does to support us. When we're able to be supported, it, your support, um, you know when we're successful at fundraisers, grants that come in, they go directly to our programming. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, know, just think about it. We're talking about opening on Saturdays. We're talking about having a staff that's co-mingled kids from Kingston and Sogarty's, you know, a singing group. You know, these are all all things that just happen. It's it's my favorite part of, of, of my job is that when you get support, you just see the direct impact immediately. Absolutely. Yeah, the singing group is amazing. Um, I think, did they perform at the Snowflake Festival? They did. They did, yes. Yes. They um and how many um now, now they're available like um say uh you know Kiwanis Club had a holiday party they they would come and like sing carols or something is is that something that organizations or people could contact the club about? Uh, yeah, I would yes, I would. It would all depend on staffing. Uh-huh. preparation and our ability to physically do it but i would yes yeah, anyone could reach out to the club and contact and chris warren who's our uh, director of operations because to me and that she- was it would be a wonderful experience for kids i mean i, I you know I, being in my church choir as a kid when we would go to the nursing home and sing right. christmas carols and stuff it was very rewarding and you know it seemed like such a drag but Halfway through, you're like, you, you felt good about yeah, yourself you felt and good. about and, the event, yeah. You know, that type of experience, as well as, you know, the responsibility of, you know, and being a part of an ensemble and rehearsing and having dates and, you know, perhaps scheduling. I know it all comes down to your staffing levels, but, you know, yeah, I, for it, sure. it's a wonderful, if that could be developed, you know, and that's perhaps another volunteer, you know, yeah. listeners yeah. Would, would right. perhaps volunteer their time or something like that. Yeah, the only thing is, though, is you have to have a staff, right, because we can't just send kids as volunteers. Mm-hmm. We always make sure that we have, a, you yeah. know, a, one of our staff um, with them. But, yeah, like, that's what really comes down to, Cam, is our, is our ability to do it. But we're definitely looking for opportunities for the kids to perform. The more they perform, the more experience they get. But, honestly, it's more about kids learning how to use their voice and not being afraid to use their voice. Yeah, yeah singing's great, and they're good at it, but it's also teaching you, here's a crowd of people, be willing to say what you think and feel. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, it is. 
Yeah, sense of confidence and. Um, I, and I got to tell you, Cam, I can relate to I can relate to what you just said. I got a board meeting later with Nina, and it's always like you know going into it. It's like, oh, this is a drag, but halfway <laughs> through, it's all right. It's, all, it's not so bad. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dan, I don't know what we would do without you. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. You'd be doing a lot more work yourself because Dan wouldn't be able I, to I'm it telling you, I mean, you're absolutely he right. <laughs> he makes the job, I had to say, he makes the job of being a board member very easy um, because it's Dan motivates, Dan is passionate about what he does. Um, Dan has so many ideas. Uh, he's so creative. And he really does make it easy being a board member. You want to fundraise, you want to do things because there's so many exciting things happening at the club. So um, I have, and the staff, Dan um, really is a leader with his staff, and his staff stands behind him and works so hard for the kids. And um, it's long hours, and it's you know you're, you're not getting you're, rich. Yeah, you're not getting rich nonprofits, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, it is about people. It yeah. all comes down to one help people. And, uh... So I had to say yeah, thank you, Dan, and, for all and, you and, do. Uh, first off, thank you so much for that. Um, um, appreciate it. But, like, I was going to say the same thing, just, you know, as we close out about our staff. I mean, we just, you know, recollection, here we are now, but, you know, this time last year we were in virtual school mode. You know, you know, yes. we, I've said a couple of times on this, our staff has switched their mold, has switched their hours. I mean, the, the smallest thing is the biggest thing that you don't even realize. Oh, the club's open all day. That means someone who applied for a 12 o'clock, 8 o'clock job is now working 8 a.m., to four, that's a complete life switch. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't have one staff that had one complaint. We don't have call out issues. We don't have any of that. That staff says yeah, our kids need us. Let's go, and, and they do whatever it takes, uh, both in Kingston and Sorbonne. And if there's one thing that uh, you know, in reflection, to be happy and proud of for us is our staff. We're so lucky to have a staff that has everyone fully invested in the mission, and that's why these programs take off. These are their ideas, right? These, these are these are they're the ones that drive it, and I'm just really lucky. And our kids are lucky to have the staff that we have. Yeah, very true. Very, very true, yeah, Dan. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a team effort, that's for sure. So, Dan, can you give us, um, I know we ask you this every month, but um, for mm -hmm. our new listeners or um, for people who have listened before. Forgetful. Um, you're, yeah, who are forgetful. There you go, Cameron. Uh, can you give us all your contact information? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, anyone who wants to be involved, you know, even like we said, we're talking about launching Saturdays on anyone who, you know, has ideas, thoughts, I'm happy to listen and, and talk. Or anyone who just has questions about club, feel free to call any the club anytime, 845-338-8666. Um, also can email me. Um, my email is dwhalen, W-H-A-L-E-N, at B-G clubs, with an S, and then Ulster County spelled out, dot org. Excellent. Great. All right. Well, seeing as uh, it's your elf on the shelf's birthday today, you should have put it in for the cow pie. <laughs> you could have brought a cow pie home for the family. So, uh, um, so Dan, funny. thank you. Appreciate your time and your calling in. And uh, have you any exciting plans for Christmas? <laughs> I'm hoping to have less exciting plans, Cam. I'm oh, there you go. Yeah. Easy, but I would like it to be less. I want no plans. There you go. <laughs> well, I, I, I hope your Christmas wish comes true for you. So. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And hey, you guys have a great holiday, and all the listeners and everyone who's yeah, the happy club. yeah, oh, so happy much. New Year too. Yes, we won't uh, you. we won't be speaking to you again until after the New Year. So yeah. enjoy your holiday season and uh, be well. Great. Thanks, everyone. Right, Thank you, Dan. Dan. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Jump in place over there. Yeah, it is a you got busy, your board busy place. Tonight, so <clears throat> after the Christmas party. That's great. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's, uh, that's how they get you there, right? Entice you in with a party. And then, there you go. Come Time with, for a meeting. with the Christmas party and then your board meeting afterwards. There you go. Well, that's and good. to be honest with you, we didn't speak about this with Dan on the radio, but this is the first in-person board meeting we will have had since the pandemic. Really? Wow. We have done Zoom since now, the is pandemic. Is there still a Zoom option? or? Yeah, we haven't done any in-person um, in board meetings. No, but to Tonight, is it oh, um, only or will Zoom? Uh, we probably he probably will Zoom so that make sure we have a quorum. Two, yeah, yeah, one or two people in it. But um, yeah. this will be our first in person one. Wow, that's good. Well, that's a milestone. Yeah, so that's exciting. Yeah, yes. that's a milestone. Yeah, that's excellent. So um, uh, it's almost top of the hour. We should be back. We have we'll have we have I think we have a couple. Yeah, we have a couple birthdays today and. We should be back with uh, Carl Brown uh, yes. after the birthday. And so. Carl always brings somebody fun and exciting on the radio with yeah, him. Absolutely. And he surprises you and I, as well as the listening 
audience out there. So we're looking forward to talking to Carl. All right. At Sounds good. Eight o'clock hour. All right. All right. So, so uh, we'll turn it over to Dan. Yeah, Dan. Dan is ready for us. Want to take us to break? You got it. Thank you very, very much. Nina Postapak, Cameron Rylance, and of course Dan Whalen, our uh, guest for the last half hour. It is now uh, almost exactly eight o'clock a.m. This Tuesday, December fourteenth, and thirty-five degrees here in Uptown Kingston. This last portion of Kingston Community Radio was brought to you by Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union, 1099 Morton Boulevard in Kingston as their main office. And we'll be right back after these messages. Hey there. What's up, bruh? Hello. Aloha. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hola. Hi. It takes a lot of voices to create the sound of us. The Y welcomes all of them with open arms. From career readiness to safe spaces, the why is there, no matter who we are. Now, more than ever, they need your support. Donate to your local why today. The why, for a better us. Read by members of the why. Hi, this is Tony Marmo from Norman Staffing, and we've been bringing together employers and job seekers since 1980. If you're an employer and have job vacancies, let Norman Staffing help fill them with permanent or temporary workers. We screen, interview, and recommend the best candidates for your company. We make the employment process easier and faster for you. Please call Norman Staffing for your employment needs at 338-9111, 338-9111, or normanstaffing.com. Hi, this is Scott Harrington from Hurley, and I support Kingston Community Radio because the people need a place to have their voice heard, and it's lost in corporate radio, so please keep listening and supporting our station. You're listening to WGHQ AM 920 and 92.5 FM, the home of Kingston Community Radio, 7 to 9 AM every weekday. My name is Dan Gatiss, and it's 35 degrees right now here on this Tuesday, December 14th. Partly cloudy today with a high of 49, and um, partly cloudy skies early will give way to cloudier skies overnight, a uh, low of 27. Wednesday, we've got uh, cloudy with occasional showers on Wednesday. Um, good 50% chance of showers with a high of 44. And that continues into the evening. Rain showers early with overcast skies later on overnight. Uh, low of 39. Thursday, well, let's see. Considerable cloudiness near record high temperatures, a high of 57. And uh, Thursday night, mostly cloudy skies, uh, becoming partly cloudy later. And um, yeah, it's a low around 45. And this upcoming portion of Kingston Community Radio is brought to you by Robert Baum Commercial Realty, located at 79 St. James Street, Kingston, New York. Visit RGBAUM for more information. And let's get back to the on-air studio now uh, with uh, Cameron Rylands, Nina Postapak, and our new guest. And we are back. And what time of the day is it's it? It's birthday. Uh, well, cow pie, birthday cake. It's cow pie. Cake. Well, let's say hi to Carl. He's on the phone. Hey, Carl. Good morning, <laughs> man. How are you? Carl. Hey, how you doing, Nina and uh, Cameron? Happy holidays. We are great. Yes. Thank you. We'll go, if you could just give us a couple minutes, we have uh, we got birthdays to announce. So. Uh, oh goodness! It must be the cow pie birthdays. It is. So <laughs> hang tight. So today, okay. the Boyce Brothers Dairy Cow Pie giveaway. We have three. So let me start off here. Um, Tuesday, December 14th, we have a uh, happy birthday to Maureen Riley from your friends at the Friendship Bible Coffee Club. Happy mm-hmm. birthday. And I have a please wish a happy birthday to Yvonne Merck. And I know Yvonne personally, so happy birthday, Yvonne, from your friends at People's Place. We All hope right. you enjoy your special day. And lastly, but certainly not least, I want to wish a happy birthday to Florence Jones from your friends at the Town of Ulster Senior Club. So, let's put these three in the randomizer and come up with a winner. And the winner is... Oh, congratulations. Yvonne Merck, you are the winner of a Boyce Brothers Dairy Cow Pie. Yvonne Merck. Go down to Boyce Dairy Milk House, 62 O'Neill Street, see Sally. And pick up your cow pie anytime after 8 o'clock today. There you today. go. So thank you, listeners, for sending them in. We had a little... Uh, we had three this week. Three buyers nice. for it today. So uh, <clears throat> now, without further ado, Carl, good morning, man. How are you doing, bud? 
Good morning. Good morning, Cameron. Good morning, Nina. How are you guys doing? We're good. Welcome. Good. Welcome. You're not calling good, in good, from eh? some tropical paradise now, are you? Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. Oh, I, I just wanted to be kind of, uh, you know, just health conscious with this Omicron uh, variant that's going on right now, just to keep you guys protected also. Abs- oh, well, so uh, thank you. And as well as you, you've had some you know, recent health concerns, so we want to make sure you stay healthy. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good right now. So Excellent. knock on wood. That's good. Yeah, knock on wood. It's good to hear, man. So how, thing, how, I mean, how is Carl Brown's universe going these days? Uh, my universe is doing really good. I was you know, a little disturbed, as, as every Kingstonian probably was, when they heard about that recent shooting that was on Van Buren Street. Yeah. I, I, I just don't know what's going on in our community. I mean, it's so scary. Um, you know, the the thing is that, you know, we, we've tried to talk to uh, not only the city but the county, too, about installing the Speed on the Streets program uh, so that we have more awareness of what's going on, especially in the troubled areas uh, in mid, in Midtown area. We, we don't see any shootings downtown. We see no shootings uptown. Yep. Uh, they can have more... Con- concentrated effort and not just be out there for a week or to 6 p.m. Uh, it, it's the daytime and it's the nighttime. The presence, I think, uh, when I was younger, and I don't want to go back and <laughs> dating everybody, but uh, <laughs> when I was younger, uh, we never had uh, shootings in, in our town. And I, and I think enough is enough. Somebody's got to put their foot down. Yeah. I mean, keep, uh, a presence, keep a presence there so that we're doing everything else right. We got a, we got a beautiful circle uh, that we we installed with tons of money from the federal government. Uh, right now, we're putting in bike lanes. We're we're doing all kind of stuff to make Kingston look beautified. Um, however, you know, in order to attract people, and, and especially out this tech city, city, we're having new businesses that are going out there. People are not going to want to live in the city unless they curb the violence. And I I think. That's something we should concentrate on. What do, what do you guys think? Absolutely. Well, it's a deep problem. I mean, at the face of it, the gun violence is like gang associated. And the gang association is usually selling drugs. And the drugs are here because people need to buy them. And people are buying the drugs because there's a huge drug problem and it's psychological and, and social problems. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. It, it, you know... The gun violence is a result of the other problems. And, you know, until we can curb the demand for drugs, whether, you know, I don't want to say legalizing it or stricter penalties or reversing bail reform or, uh, yeah. you know, take the Amsterdam model and, you know, legalize it and tax it and regulate it. You know, I, I don't know what the answer is. But yeah. um, well, the, well, the, to well, me, the it's, it's the is- symptom, you know, I'm worried about, I mean, I, sh- I live... Midtown. There's been shootings on you know near the corner of my Franklin and, and Fair, and um, mm-hmm. it's um, the, the gun violence is a result of the drug trade, and uh, you know yeah. what I mean. It's well, you, well you how, do you, it, how it's, do you curb it, a drug trade? I, I can I can tell you emphatically, um, there's a there's a way to curb the drug trade, and 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 the way you do that is by giving people jobs hope, and ambition to stay out of trouble. Mm-hmm. When, when you have people that don't have, they will find a way to make a living. Create the jobs. Create an environment where people are not wanting to get on drugs. Yes. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a twofold epidemic. It's called an economic development problem where we're not fo- focusing on economic development as far as giving people jobs and an outlook on life, if they don't have it, they're going to find it a negative way. Absolutely. That's yeah. the way I feel. Yeah. That's the way I feel. Yeah, and, uh, you and, know, and, uh, I, I don't know if you listened to, um, to the, the last half hour, but Dan Whalen was on, and um, mm-hmm. I only can comment on this because I have firsthand knowledge being involved with the Boys and Girls Club, but I think Dan mm-hmm. is doing a tremendous job of trying to get um, the youth out into the community um, to do internships, Absolutely. introducing them to different um, fields um, of uh, for occupations and jobs, mm-hmm. and um, really giving them the opportunity to see what's available. And I think programs like that, and I know um, there's, uh, I'm just speaking about the Boys and Girls Club, but there's 
numerous organizations that are there for the youth. That's what we need to grow um, because I think that's where the difference is really being made. And they're in a safe environment, a positive environment that's um, mm -hmm. really instilling in them what they um, need to go out into the community and really um, want to work and want to um, respect their fellow, um, you know, youth and fellow um, friends and so forth. And, and like Carl, yeah. Carl said, you got to let, let them see a hope or see another way, you know, and, and offer opportunities, you know. Part of that, you know, the, the Brothers of Bard program, hopefully, you know, exactly. growing a mentor, you know, a, a mem mentorship type program for, Absolutely. you know, our, our, you know, our youth and, you, you know, role, the positive role model, you know. Yeah, like uh, Dan said, they're in Kingston High School now. Yeah. A great thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and, and that's the point. Nina and, and Cameron, you brought up two good points about the BARD and mentorship program. They're even doing it at the county level, too. They are great programs. Nina, you mentioned also about the Boys Club. Great programs to keep kids off the streets and keep them mentally focused on positive things. This is, this is all good. Community Action is trying to do things. Uh, Harambe is trying to do things. Everyone's trying to roll up their sleeves and pitch in. But we need the police presence also to pitch in and roll up their sleeves, too. We really do. And it, it, it's, a, it's a collaborative effort among all of us. But then opening up jobs for some of these, some of these kids. You're talking about mentorship? Give me a mentorship program into about 100 jobs at the county level. Give me about a, men a mentorship program at the city level for a lot of these uh, young youth. This is this is where you start taking people off of the streets and focusing on, oh, wow, when I graduate, I might be able to get a job at the city. I'll get a job in the county or whatever the case may be. That's all these kids have to look forward to today. If they don't find it here, they leave and they go somewhere else. I'd rather keep our kids in our community and looking for for growth and, and opportunity. Yeah, make, yeah. About that? having them become part of our, our economy, our, our workforce. Uh, you know, our, our, our everything, part, you know, part of our community, staying here, absolutely. But vet, getting that yeah. vesting, you know, that's where it starts. You know, I, I believe that's where, you know, the 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 positive role model, like, you know, Harambe, Boys and mm -hmm. Girls Club, you know, church, you, you know, youth organization, Brothers at Bard, you know, trying to, mm -hmm. you know, grow all these little seeds and, you know, hopefully a, a, a mesh, you know, everything will grow together. Is, is the hard yeah. part. And, um, yeah. You, you know, and where I, does that leadership think, come from? You know, think, uh, you know uh, who, who makes that happen? That's what we've got to try to figure out, I guess, you know, or, or create. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing, the thing is, too, though, um, you've got to realize that a lot of these guys uh, are, are committing this crime because they know they can't get caught. Now, if there's a likelihood that you're going to get caught because you have a presence on the streets with the police, you're most likely not going to commit that crime. The only reason why these people commit crimes like this is they know they can get away with it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and that, that, that's one thing. I mean, it's... it's yeah. But well, we, I tell you right now, we have a great community. We have a lot of great things that are going on here. Well, how uh, about that just, wave of... The wave of crime in California with the smash and grab gangs, uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. You, yeah. You, look, I'm a great believer in there's rules and regulations, there's laws. Whether we agree with those laws or we don't agree with those rules mm -hmm. and regulations, that's what makes us a civilized society. That's what um, allows us mm -hmm. to function um, in a manner that is safe and healthy for all of our citizens. And um, unfortunately, you need someone to... Um, to, what's the word I'm looking for here? I'm struggling. Monitor, um, enforce. You need someone to enforce those rules and regulations, and um, the police are the individuals that do that. And um, I think the respect that we've had for the police in the past. And I'm not saying. Let me say this. And every um, I, I don't care if you're a lawyer, a policeman, a fireman. There's wonderful attorneys. There's one. There's great policemen. There's great. Um, Firemen, yep. but there's also Absolutely. in every, um, occupation, every occupation, right? Yeah, people that leave a lot to be desired. Owners, so, yeah. um, 
I think you need to look within to make your organization, whether it's law enforcement, whether it's the legal field, whatever the case may be, whether you're elected official, um, you may mm -hmm. you need to look within your organization to um, look at where the problems are, where um, we're maybe missing um, uh, certain things, and um, make it better. Um, it should be a constant changing, a constant looking at everything. And I think that's where we kind of um, fall by the wayside sometimes. Is um, and yeah. we need to um, really hold those accountable that aren't doing their job, um, no matter what field um, it is. And really, say we need to do that because we. We don't need to turn a blind eye to it. We don't need. There's no such thing as loyalty when someone disrespects the um, office that they hold or the position that they hold. Um, they deserve um, to um, bear the ramifications of their actions. So I think it's a fine balance there of um, really looking at the organization as a whole. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think you're 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 100 percent. Right, Nina, and and that's that's the nice thing about a small town, uh, Kingston, the way it is right now, because we we can rally together and we can fill some of the voids uh, for some of these kids and get things done. It's it's how do we deter these gangs from coming into the area? Because see what's happening: the young kids are seeing some of this violence and they're thinking it's okay. It's a, and when you constantly see something every day, if every day you went out your door and you seen somebody fighting and fist fighting and everything, after a while, after after a year, you would think that that's normal. You get numb to it, and it's we, glorified and, it. and it's glorified in music, TV, movies, video games, everywhere. You know, it's it's you're bombarded with it. It becomes you get yeah, you're right. You yeah. get desensitized. Carl. And, and it becomes a parental, a parental thing, too, where the parents need to monitor their kids of what they're watching, what they're taking in. It's like the old saying, you are what you eat, you know? And, and, and I, I think that's, that's, that's part of the issue, too, is, is educating these parents on, on some of these things are not okay. There's, quite honestly, you should have to pass a test before you're allowed to have a kid. Yeah. Like those two <laughs> knuckleheads in, in Michigan right. that they were called into the school, that school shooting was, the parents were called into the school, and they're like, no, you deal with it. It's not our problem. You know, kids in school, it's a school problem. And they, like, walked out. It's like, and now they should go to jail forever. It's yeah, unbelievable. It's the, oh, they, they purchased that gun. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the parents. That's a whole other issue, yeah, the yeah. lack of parenting. You know, teachers... Teachers raise uh, spend more time with kids than parents do for the most part, and it's 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 a whole societal. Thing. I don't know. It's it's a deep issue, and it is. boy, oh boy, it tough. Is. Yeah, it is. It is, uh, and it's affecting small towns. It's affecting a lot of small towns all over uh, the United States. You know, we're just one small hamlet here uh, among many thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands of areas around. But you know what? We can't we can't solve everything for everyone, but we can focus on our issues and how to solve them here in our in our local town. Get your own. You know, it's not to not to say that we could be a model, but you know what? We could we could learn for what we should be doing right, and we could learn for what we're turning a a blank a deaf eye to. I mean, so you know, we we should all we should all hold ourselves accountable for. Not speaking up and not saying anything. That's why I like the radio station. And I appreciate well, and you, you guys know, inviting me on to talk about these things. Good point, Carl. And this is a call in show, 331-9255. So if anyone would like to call in with their opinions or questions for Carl. Um, yep. Can we talk a little bit about community action, Carl, and where, what's happening you sure there? You sure can. Yeah. You sure can. What's going on there and what's new and exciting? Well, we got it. We have a we have a toy drive that's uh, that's going on. It's going, They're going to be giving out toys on the 20th. Uh, Susie Hinchy with a couple of other board members. Uh, I, I believe uh, Ginny was there. Uh, uh, another board member named Tina was there. And and they got together and went out and bought all these toys and everything. They're giving them out to people. People's Place is doing a great job also. They went out yes. to Ellenville with toys uh, for the kids. I mean, this is the kind of thing that, that, that really warms your heart to see uh, during the time of, of holidays that they're going out giving to uh, kids that, that don't get a lot for for the holidays, and this this is what it's all about for 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 community. 
and I'm excited about it, and I hope you guys are also. How, how can uh, the people? Other thing is, is, we're, we're, we we may be hiring a, a new uh, executive uh, to uh, to take the helm and to run uh, community action, which I'm I'm excited uh, for also. Wow, that's great! Um, now, is this toy drive ongoing? Excuse me, sir. Is the toy drive ongoing? Is it happening now? Yes, it's on. It's happening right now. Um, and uh, what's happening, you can contact Susie Hinchy at uh, Community Action. Uh, I don't have the number right now because I'm calling in. I can normally look at my phone and cheat when I'm with you guys. Uh, but, you know, a lot of organizations are trying to do a lot of things. You know, one, one of these days I'd, like, I'd love to see, and, and this is just a guess, I'd love to see People's Place, uh, Community Action, fam, Family of Woodstock, and different uh, organizations get together and have a huge toy giveaway at the UPAC Center. You know, when Nina probably remembers this, when, you know, when they used to have Santa Claus up there and they used to give out I toys do. and bikes and stuff like that. That would, that would really warm my heart, too. I, and I did look up the number, um, Carl. It's 338-8750 for um, community yep. action. So if you do want to donate, you can call 338-8750. Absolutely. Absolutely, and as for as for Susie Hinchy, and of course you have other programs, right? You have some w winter weatherization programs and other. Yes, we, we have we have a weatherization program uh, this year. Unfortunately, with a lot of the uh, uh, material outages and stuff like that, um... we've been doing as many many homes as possible. It's it's kind of difficult sometimes because we have a a specific. Um, uh, thing to do as far as insulating houses and putting the proper windows up, uh, putting proper uh, sealants up, uh, using different energy-saving uh, uh, gadgets like uh, outlets and so on and so forth, uh, lighting, light bulbs and stuff like that. Uh, we have that program going on, but, you know, during this, during this time, sometimes we can't get into houses if somebody's infected with covid or anything like that, we can't get into the houses because we gotta we gotta make sure our staff is is Safe, uh, yeah, yeah. is okay. You know, so that's a, that's our weatherization program. Um, our uh, Head Start and early Head Start program is still still going on. Uh, if anyone needs to register their their young one into a Head Start or early Head Start program, or doing reading and all kind of stuff to get kids qualified to get them in 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 tune to going into school because we found out that you know a lot of kids that when they from poverty areas when they went into school they were way behind as far as reading writing and keeping up with the other kids so the head start and early head start program helps helps to com combat that issue yeah. uh, we also have an outreach program which we just talked about which is uh headed up by susan susie Hinchy, where we help uh, people with uh, clothing we help them out with rental rental assistance, utility assistance, prescription assistance. Um, so that that's that's still going on. Also, it's a vital need here in in the in the county as well as it is in in Kingston. So you're busy. Community action is very busy right now. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, uh, we are. Uh, and, you know, we're going to we're going to get busier as as we go through this pandemic. As you realize, there's a lot of people that are out of work. They're going to need our assistance. Yeah. So we, we need to get the word out to let people know we're here to help if you need it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I hear so many, I, even friends of mine, oh, I, I'm sick, I got this, I got this going on, I have this going on, I can't pay this, I can't pay that. They may qualify for some of our services. So if you're on the phone, if you're listening, if you have problems paying rent or you're paying your utilities, please contact Ulster County Community Action um, and, and ask for assistance. Uh, ask to speak to somebody. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Resource, absolutely. Yeah. And now, you're, you're um, anything you can report, you're an officer of Harambe as well. Anything uh, you'd like to talk, uh, share with us about what might be going on? Any holiday plans or anything? Or Well, um, I'm glad you. I'm glad you asked that. I, and I'm particularly the, uh, Fair Street, the, the burial ground. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Pine Street burial ground is is uh, off and going. Uh, right now, we just got a call from the city. Uh, 
the Parks and Recreation, we got a fifty thousand dollar grant uh, to basically help us with unearthing these 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 bodies um, that are there, so that we can do our DNA testing and so on and so forth. Um, we have uh, people from Marist College that's going to be on that archaeological dig up and find, and so that uh, we can start identifying these people and then reburying them at a proper burial and giving these people the names that they so uh, desire. Because yeah, you got to realize mark, the markers a lot of these and people, uh, yeah, the the the, the dedication that their remains deserve, or you know, the respect. Yes. What uh, what sort of time frame is that? I'm that's really neat, actually. Uh, well, we're we're trying to get uh, onto the national registry right now. This is ongoing right now. Uh, we're dealing with uh, the parks parks area right now. Uh, Suzanne Cahill, which is the um, planning director, uh, she is going to be working with us so that we can actually start identifying, you know, things that we have to do. Um, we're going to have a, uh, a PAC committee, which is basically of local local people. Um, so we're trying to identify which people can be a contributor there, uh, as long as we're not getting paid. As, you know, uh, so you know we're 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 close to getting that national registry, which I'm pretty sure we're going to get. So you'll see one of those signs that are up there yeah, eventually, like, like you see in these, you know, the blue and the yellow signs. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we can uh, document the place itself. Uh, we have a lot of things that's going on, going on right now. I just can't relinquish too much without letting my left hand know what my right hand's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can understand. That. Absolutely, we do. Yeah. We do. Uh, Absolutely. Because you're uh, the, yeah. on the chairman of the board, president of the board, or, or see something with that. With uh, the, the, yeah, <laughs> the pre president. Sorry. President. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they they uh, they nominated me as a, as a president. I I don't know if they knew what they were doing or not, but <laughs> oh no, <laughs> oh, that absolutely. <laughs> Is that one of those meetings where you left the room and they nominated you while you're gone, and by the time you got back, you were uh, the president? No, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. They 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 actually uh, talked me into it. Uh, I'm sure it, it wasn't was either, a hard either, sell. E either you do this right now, or we're going to uh, kidnap you. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you're a good man, Carl. I'm sure you uh, def you did it, you know, for the uh, for the right reason. You weren't coerced into it. You did it for the yeah. right reason. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of uh, I I can say this. You know, there's so many organizations, and and for anybody that's listening, there's, there's organizations out there like Boys Club, People's Place. Uh, community action that can use some board of directors there to help steer the organizations in, into into certain areas. They're not paid jobs, so if you're looking to get paid, it's not a place to be. But there's organizations out there that help to do positive things in the community. And if you want to be a positive force, you know, contact any of these agencies. See what you can do to help out. See what you can do to pitch in. Because I tell you right now, just like as we're looking at. Uh, uh, the areas that are in Kentucky right now that, yes. that went under these tornadoes, look at all the hands that are trying to pitch in to build up that particular area. Yeah. Yeah. Think, think, think of these agencies as being tornado-stricken and that you, your hands can, that pitches in and helps, it helps to further the agency even further. It really does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Nina, and Nina, thank you for your your service there on 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 the, on the board with uh, the Boys Club. I mean, you're not getting paid for that, but look at the positive positive role that you're doing there. Yeah, you you know, Carl, um, when you volunteer, it's really not what you give; it's what you get back. And I think that's so true, and that's why we all sit in the positions that we sit because we get so much back from what we do. And um, for all those that are listening, I really encourage you to, like you said, Carl to really look at um, getting involved in an organization because it's so um, self-satisfying. And the day you, you get so much back from it, uh, and, you know, Cameron and I talk about this all the time, it's um, you grow up in um, from a young age and you volunteer and you get back to your community and it just becomes part of part who of you. you are. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I agree. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, Carl, any parting words for us? Anything you want to add in the last minute? Well, um, you know, there's so many, there's so many different things that we can talk about. I try to stay positive. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, just, just me. Uh, you know, I'm kind of 
and this is this is no disrespect to anyone. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of leery of 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 our Broadway, and and the you know just 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 how much room is taken up for uh, some of these bike lanes. I mean, that, to me, uh, you know, I I don't know what hap- is going to happen, but I'm I'm scared to see what's going to happen once the snow starts flying. Yeah, well. Hopefully, uh, it won't be an issue this year. <laughs> I'd like to kick that snow can I, down the road. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we won't get that much snow. But yeah, I mean, everything else that's going on in the community has been so positive, and and I hope we continue this road down there where yeah, everything is positive. Yeah. But our organizations working together, I think that's an essential, central key to having a a great a great community. Absolutely. Uh, so that's that's my that's my parting words. That's your Christmas yeah. wish, there, right? All right. Well, have Carl, a have a great and Merry I, Christmas, yes, Happy Merry Holidays, Christmas. and uh, we'll talk to you uh, after Happy the New, new year. year. Yeah. Fantastic. Have a nice holidays, everyone. Th- Enjoy yourself, and uh, we will. Safe, Thank please. you very much. All right, Carl. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right, Dan, take it away. Thank you, Nina Pushtapak. Cameron Rylance, and a very, very special thanks to Carl Brown for calling in, and of course, Dan Whalen from the last half hour. You are with us here at Kingston Community Radio at the bottom of the hour, KCR AM 920 and 92.5 FM, and streaming online at mykcr.org. Tuesday, December 14, 35 degrees here in Uptown Kingston. This last portion of Kingston Community Radio was brought to you by Robert Baum. Commercial Realty, located at 79 St. James Street, Kingston, New York. Visit rgbaum.com for more information. We'll be right back after these messages. We are Lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. Give back. Let's unite the world for good. We are Lions. You can be too. Visit weserve.org. Hi, this is Tony Marmo from Norman Staffing, and we've been bringing together employers and job seekers since 1980. If you're an employer and have job vacancies, let Norman Staffing help fill them with permanent or temporary workers. We screen, interview, and recommend the best candidates for your company. We make the employment process easier and faster for you. Please call Norman Staffing for your employment needs at 338-9111, 338-9111, or normanstaffing.com. Hi, this is Shirley Stabe from Kingston, and I support Kingston Community Radio, and so should you. And thank you for being with us here at KCR, Kingston Community Radio, AM 920 and 92.5 FM, and streaming online at mykcr.org. This upcoming portion of Kingston Community Radio is brought to you by Roundout Savings Bank. Always working for you and our community with branches in Kingston, West Hurley, and Hyde Park. Also online at rondoutbank.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Partly cloudy today with a high of 49. And partly cloudy early tonight with increasing clouds overnight with a low of 27. Wednesday, cloudy with occasional showers for the afternoon. High near 45. 50% chance of uh, rain on uh, Wednesday. And uh, same continues um, uh, through the evening on uh, Wednesday night. And then uh, uh, basically uh, overcast skies later uh, as the rain uh, subsides. A low of 40 degrees. Mostly cloudy on Thursday with a near record high temperature of 57. And um, Thursday night... Mostly cloudy skies early, then partly cloudy after midnight, and um, a low of 45 degrees. Now let's get back to the on-air studio with Nina Postupak, Cameron Rylance, and our new guest. We are back for the home stretch, Hi. and we are joined with, uh, joined by, joined with, joined by, 
Join, join Bob. Bob. I mean, have Sue well, Copenhagen. Either, <laughs> e- e- either way, I think. The director of the Ulster County Office of the Aging Good is here. Morning. With uh, a whole list of stuff. Yeah, but I first, see. before we get involved... Uh, I a surprise for I me. do. I am the. <laughs> I am lucky enough to be able to uh, present this check to you from uh, the WGHQ Happy Christmas Fund and the Maxwell family um, has is making a donation to the Office of the Aging to aid your wow. relief services. And if you could, so we'd love you to open it I'm on the air. Um, yeah. open because we, we, we want to see your that. facial I'd expression. Love to do this. When you see the generosity of uh, of of the GHQ family, whoa! And there you go. Thank you. Yeah. The WGHQ Happy Christmas Fund has given us three thousand. Can I say it? Yes, you can. Thousand dollars. This is so great. Excellent. Thank you so and much. And that, and we know that that is for your uh, so wonderful. Your, I don't want to say the Christmas relief. Uh, age, you know. Efforts. There's so many things we can do with this. Yes. Um. You know. I hope it's unrestricted. Yes, it is. is. It is, is your discretion to okay. spend on our residents of, yep. or the recipients seniors, of your, your seniors, service, right? our seniors and yep. our listening. There's so many needs out our there. Out. There really are. But one of the things we want to do is um, increase and have more opportunities for seniors to have social events because so many have been, you know, isolated for so long, they're, mm. they're asking for them. We have a, we have a luncheon this Thursday at, in Saugerties that is got a wait list. We have a sing-along that does not have a wait list on Friday, and you know who's playing, going to try uh, to company is? through all the Christmas Oh, uh, you are a marvelous accompanist. Uh, not when can, I'm sight reading. Cameras. If you can muddle through a capers... Uh, well, that's because can, I practiced my capers. Well, there you anyway, go. you can do it. Um, we're having a sing along on Friday, and we do have room for that. We have Christmas crafts and a holiday tea. What I plan to do is take all of my teapots and make like four different kinds of tea and have little cookies oh. for people, and they come and sing Christmas. Is that gonna be at the hub? Yep, it's at oh, the hub. Oh, that's cool. Hub What's the Friday? hours of that? The, or the time? One to three. One, two, on three, fr- after lunch. Friday. No lunch is served, but little cookies tea and, and tea. Tea and biscuits. Tea and biscuits. <laughs> high <laughs> and tea at uh, 1 o'clock, right? Yep, high tea. And uh, the thing in Socrates has got a huge wait list, so I can't do anything How many that. before the, 100 before the wait list? Or, you know. 100 are already so, on it. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So and we, that's just your size constraint, right? Or I, you know, it's size? not it's not full capacity, but we're trying to yeah. spread people out yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. And um, we're also going to be checking uh, vaccination status at the door okay. um, with this whole thing with the new, you know, Governor Hochul and the new um, mandated. Yep. mandated. Yep. It's going to be a little difficult. But um, anyway, people are looking forward to it. I hope I think we have a, a DJ and they'll be dancing and a lovely meal by Gateway. And um, usually we have three or four holiday things, but this year we didn't. So this we're going to try one, see how it goes. And the and the sing along, and then after this week, I don't have any more holiday, like, events. responsibilities <laughs> or events. Bah humbug, right? No, it's okay. It just they all happen at once. Yes. This tonight is my chorus thing. Tomorrow night is another dinner. Thursday night's Kiwanis. It's like yeah, everything Thursday, is in one. Yeah, they're for yeah, the yeah. same week. Well, when it rains, of course. <sighs> anyway, um, I did have a little list here of things that we still have to think about and remember. The hub is busy. So the hub has yoga on Monday mornings, chess club on Monday mornings, of which I am a member. I do lose every week, but I learn by losing. You're losing the same same person or or you're losing too? There's there's our teachers. Everyone's everyone's kicking your butt. The teachers kick my butt, right? But today, you know, poor lady who came unsuspecting, I finally checkmated her. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) It took a while. (laughs) And then... um, Tuesday we have um, Tuesday we have an exercise. Or Tuesday we go to the mall. We do our mall walk still, and we'll do that consistently now yeah, every week. Good, good. Starts at ten at the mall in the food court. People, well, there's a quite a big group now. Um, Wednesday mornings we have an aerobics, light aerobics and stretch band. Wednesday lunch we have congregate meal, um, and that's been getting more a larger group. And then Wednesday afternoon, we have, um, or maybe Monday, we have Tai Chi. Monday's the Tai Chi in the afternoon. Wednesday, there's something else. Thursday, 
there's something else. Don't ask me. I, you know, might be Tai Chi Blur. again. <laughs> but we also have been opening up the hub for all the SIPs groups. And if people don't know what a SIPs group is, it's it's an acronym SSIP, Settled and Serving in Place. It's a, a an informal group of seniors in an area who join together for mutual support to help everyone stay at home. Mm -hmm. So you have somebody in the group who, or a few people who can still drive. So the people who can't drive will be helped by the people who can. Mm -hmm. You have a couple people in the group who don't cook anymore or can't. A couple people can help with that. Maybe oh. somebody does chores. Maybe somebody helps do wow. light bulb. It's a great idea. And so that's self-organizing? <laughs> yep, self-organized. Really? Huh. They're all over the place. There's several in this county, and we've opened up the hub for them to have their meetings in the hub. And also for all of the SIPs groups, I think there it might be this month, all of the SIP groups, like the head of them, will meet together because they, they do try to band together and kind of have a, a group uh, website to attract folks in their area. It's, it's a really wonderful idea. That's really cool. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, nobody wants to end up in a nursing home. Nobody yeah, no. wants to go into assisted living. Only it's expensive, it's dangerous. Exactly. I mean, not that not most, dangerous, of these, but yeah, most of these sickness, folks yeah. don't need to be in a, in a home at all, yeah, you know, but, no, but no. still to stay in their own home. And I will say in general that um, people have not been preparing very well for their aging. And they need to look at how they live. They need to look at where they live. They need to look at their house, the way that their house is constructed. What happens if I have a stroke and I can't walk anymore? What happens if I cannot go up the stairs anymore? Is my house suitable? No. The answer to that pretty much is no. I couldn't get into my house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Really, you have yeah. steps to get into your Six house. Six in the front and yeah. 12 in the back, yep. or vice versa. Yeah, yep. my whole house is in the air. Oh. That's wild. Hmm. So you have to think about things like that. If you wish to stay in place or wish to stay in your home, if you own it, mm -hmm. those are things to consider. Um, you know, how how are you set for, you know, long-term, they don't really sell long-term care insurance anymore, but, you know, are, 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 you, are you someone who worked all your life and can tap into Medicare when you're 65? You know, that's really important um, because there are some people who were gig workers or are artists who never were part of the of the income stream or whatever, yeah. what have you, who paid into Medicare or Social Security, they don't have it, yeah. you know? So what are they going to do? They have no income. After, you know, what are you going to do if you have no income when you're 75 years old and you can't do whatever it was you were doing the rest of your life? You will go on Medicaid and you will live like that or you will be Section 8. I mean, it is what it is. So yeah, you yeah, need to know, think yeah, that's about That's a hard reality like that. that needs yes. to be thought of. I mean, it's not. I know it's it's a hard thing to think about. Yeah. Think about it now. I mean, my generation, you know, the baby boomers need to think about stuff like that. They're already, you know, the beginning of the baby yeah, boomers. I don't I, know I when mean, that I, was. I'm 40s, probably, late 40s, yeah. right? Yeah. People were born in the 40s through the 50s, and the end of the, the beginning of the 60s is the baby boomers, I think. Yeah. So some of them are already aging out and calling our office saying, I can't get out of my apartment. I can't, you know, I had a this or that happen to me, and I can't, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't make my meals, I can't drive anymore. What are you going to do? Yeah. You've got to think about that stuff. Yeah, 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 jeez. You know, it's nice to rail against the government when you don't like it, but when the government's there to, to help you, you got to think about things a little Change bit. Change your vote, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um... Sorry, I got off my soapbox there. Um, I did want to remind everyone. That's why you get a half hour. The winter. Submit a give you a bill, therapy bill. Later. <laughs> it is a psychiatric help. Plan. Exactly. Um, everything that we do in the senior hub is always canceled when S Kingston S City School District cancels because oh, of weather. Cool. So. Um, if we have, let's say somebody gets home delivered meals that day, they'll make up for it the next day, right? That's why we have extra meals. That's why people sometimes have, you know, you can't rely on one meal five days a week. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's another thing. Where's my food coming from? How do I, how do I, I'm not saying to stockpile food, but have something there that you can always fall back on. Right. So um, <clears throat> anyway, you know, morning activities are canceled if there's a two-hour delay, and if if there's a state of emergency and 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 this obviously if the county is closed, we don't do anything, right? right. I just wanted to remind everybody that. 
Um, I also um, am pleased to say that in the hub, there's so many people coming on Wednesday. They We asked if they wanted to also come on Monday. So we're going to start our Monday, Wednesday meals there in January. So oh, that's cool. great. Back by popular that's demand, nice. right? Back by popular demand. People are coming. They like the meals. They get to sit there and with... Gateways. Still doing that. Well, he's still doing it. We're still um, warming up frozen stuff, but I have tasted the meals that they have, and they're really good. Yeah. Even really. the fish, which I don't know if it survives well as frozen, but it's delicious. I'm frozen. I yeah, like yeah. fish. All but frozen at sea. Yeah. <laughs> as you catch it yourself, right. it's been frozen. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and we do have, we still have once a week in Rosendale on Fridays, once a week at Sargaty's on Tuesdays. Once a week, always been once a week in New Paltz on Thursdays. Told you about the hub. And then in Ellenville, it's Mondays and Wednesdays because it's such a big group. We already split them up. So that's all. That's what's going on congregate wise. So people can call us or they can call Gateway and say, I want to go to Rosendale. Um, on, and that's on Fridays. They would call Gateway, which is 331-2180 to make reservations for a meal. They fill out paperwork. They become a regular congregate meal person. It used to be every week, but we're not doing that yet. So we're slowly moving back yeah, to normal things. Plus it's all over the county, which is nice. You've really spread out from right. Allenville yeah. to Saugerties yep. to New Paltz, yep. Rosendale. And I've been in conversation with Woodstock, and we want to think about a meal there once a week if I can, you know, have some conversations with the town and the folks who want to do it. Woodstock Community Center has things going on, but they may also have a an opportunity for us to give at least a meal a week uh, nice to time. seniors. Where is that? Yeah. Exactly. Um, when you go into Woodstock and you turn left, you know, off of 375, yep, yep. and then you turn right on Rock City Road, it's uh -huh. right down there. Oh, it's okay. It's a beautiful center. On Rock City Road, okay. Yeah, huh. it's yeah. right down the road. Um, so the right Colony? Off, after, what's the Colony? colony the Playhouse? Yeah, the Colony Cafe, the big white place on the right. Mm. I don't know where yeah, that is. Matter. But you know where the center of town is? Uh -huh. It's right at, yeah, uh, like a quarter road, yeah. mile out of the center yeah, a quarter of town. Mile. Okay, it's yeah, not yeah, far right. from there at all. So it's past the colony. Right oh, okay. past Family of Woodstock's building. Oh, all right, yep. And they're the one. We had this thing. We're involved in this thing. Um, uh, I'm on the advisory, advisory board with Family of Woodstock called Home Sharing. That's a whole different project oh, that yeah. we're involved in. Oh, yeah, how is that going? In. So we had a public presentation last week on Thursday, I think it was. And I thought it went well. There were a lot of people who came and um, a lot of good questions. It's basically a program. It, it goes through, it's all over the, cap, the country. It's in different places in the country where if you own a home, again, we're talking about staying at home, stay, settled and serving in place. And you can't, um, you need maybe a little bit of income or you're a widow, you're alone, or you're a widower and you're alone. You want to stay in your home, but you'd like somebody else there. It's a, it's a way to share your home. So if there's a, a room or a suite or maybe a cottage on your property, people can share their property. Either the people pay rent or they pay a combination of rent and um, chores. That can happen mm -hmm. too. There's a lot of folks in their 20s and 30s can't afford to buy a house. Right. So, th But um, they're just limiting this to Woodstock folks right now. Um, there's people who can't afford to live in Woodstock, so yeah. they li live outside, but they work in Woodstock, for yeah. instance, yeah. right? So this is a, a really great idea. We hope it catches on through the whole county. I think it's a great partial solution to housing issues. And I know that Pat Ryan is working hard to, you know, trying to target different places for worker housing and low-income housing. I know, you know, there's a couple going up, blah, 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 but whatever. Anyway, it's a really, really cool idea. Yeah, really absolutely. Cool. So it's in the beginning stages, so. Yeah, but we have a flyer now, and we have applications oh, um, for both okay. renters or sharers and sharees. And Family of Woodstock got a, a relatively small grant, but enough to get it started to help um, establish a, a, a position there part-time, I believe, to help um, coordinate this. So the whole idea is to take a person who needs a home and a person who has a home and make a good match. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's That's successful. Exactly. Interviews and exactly. background, right. background vetting. Yeah, yes, vetting, absolutely. background checks, all that stuff yeah, yeah. is what family would do. Yeah. And I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, it's a cool, potentially yeah. huge. Yes. Um, let's see. What did I do? 
Um, so it's the end of December. Our taxes are, you know, blah, 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 done at December 31st, I guess, you know, pretty much. AARP is once again doing their tax aid program, but they are, again, like they did last year, just focusing on their previous clients. I believe there are other places who do that. I know United Way has done it in the past, helped people with their taxes, and also SUNY New Paltz had their school of business helping oh. free. I'm talking about free, okay. uh, free tax. And um, our, our folks do it. It's a great program. Um, it's a little challenging to not do it in person because AARP has pretty strict guidelines about not meeting in person. But they scan stuff back and forth. They do it through email. Or our office is always ha happy to scan things for people who don't have email and send it off. So it's, it's, um, it's gearing up. Again, I wanted to make everybody aware of that. We have a number that they call, separate number from our office, but they can always call the office 340-3456 and get that tax aid number. Um, Medicare just ended their open enrollment on the 7th, which was last week, I think. But Medicare happens all year round, right? So if you've just, you're going to turn 65 and let's say in three months you need to do it before your turn 65 so we do have people in the office who are still doing that all year round um, medicare savings plan is all year round and the lady can do a lot of stuff via email and phone she prefers that right now and she can help people apply to save a lot of money on your deductibles like 100 over 140 dollars a month on a Medicare deductible. So and it's up quick, boy. And we're talking Ooh. about that hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, of savings. Yeah. And between that and the AARP, we get a lot, a lot of money back for seniors. So all free. Um, talked about exercise classes, yoga, the chess. I talked about that. Um, congregate sites, I talked about that. I wanted everybody, again, to you know know about the chess. Our, our leader of our chess club is like, oh, I don't wish more people would come to this. I don't, it's really a great thing for your head. It makes you focus, and it makes you quiet, and it makes you just look at that thing. I don't know if everybody anybody saw the Queen's Gambit. It yeah, was, on, awesome. it was a great, like, I don't know, was it eight, nine episodes? I saw it. I it thought it was enthralling, yeah, even though it was it all was. about chess, yeah, you know? Yeah, it, <laughs> it was enthralling. And it was a, I mean, I know she had issues with pills and everything, but um, it was really, really cool. And I hope it got people interested because it's a great game. It's an old game. And games in general are good for people. They, they get you going. They, it's socialization. It's, it's brain waves. It's focus. It's fun, which gets your endorphins. I have a whole article about it next week's go. buzz. Um, <laughs> next month's buzz. Let's go. And, um, I, you know, we want people to come to game day on Wednesdays, which is from 1 to 3 in the hub. And we have someone leading that. He's been really great to, to help folks get on the That's uh, growing? Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a domino group now. Oh, that's um, domino. People want to play. Joe Cuban. Yeah, I'm I'm play Cuban men sitting in the corner. <laughs> I don't know. Sipping it's little coffee, coming. playing dominoes. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a big thing about dominoes. I, who is, knew? Yeah, yeah. You know, Latin I'd never America, played it dude, before. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a group that wants to play backgammon. There's okay. people who want to play mahjong. What? I was thinking the ukulele group, but I think that's the library that has the ukulele group. Oh, really? There's yeah. a ukulele. Yeah, the ukulele I group. think it's great what libraries have really transformed yes, themselves, right. right, into places where hubs, people can go hubs, kids. with all of the activities. When my mother was alive, she'd go, oh, two or three weeks. You know, there's brain games on Tuesday. There's this on Wednesday. There's They have garden tools for rent. Yes. Get out. Yeah, like if not rent to borrow free, like seed bank garden. At the library team, at the Kingston the library. area library. Yes. Do they have their own garden there? They do, do you know? small plot, but it's for you know at GW school they have huge plot and you can reserve garden plots. And I know a lot of a lot of Spanish families have okay. garden plots. Yeah, there. They and they're like some of them are like chock a block full. Wow. Yeah, and you can rent you can get tools that. from the library. Walk That's over. That's really cool. Yeah. The whole idea of community gardens can involve everybody of any age. You know, the kids, people who want to grow their own food, don't want pesticides on your food, don't want herbicides. I mean, I have right. my own tiny little garden in the back. But there's nothing better than going out in oh, your backyard and snipping herbs and taking parsley. the, the I rest cut of my tomatoes. Parsley last night. <laughs> still left in my... Yeah, parsley really? is beautiful this time of year. Oh, yeah. It grows until it's... 
freezes. Oh yeah, much. parsley's very hearty. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I do remember my, uh, that next year. Or a Lives tomato. Are hearty. How, how glorious is it to pick a sun warm oh. tomato and just slice it and eat it right my there? My tomatoes don't do well in my garden. I don't think I get enough sun, but the little ones do great. Yeah, the little right. ones. Either right. way, <laughs> pop an in as soon as yep, they're ripe. They don't even make it inside. They're like candy. Yeah, they don't even. I grew corn last summer. Oh, you did. I did. I had fifteen very um, full stalks, really? uh, corn, wow, corn that's stalks. Cool. Yeah, cor- huh. I guess you call them stalks, right? I was so excited when the little things started coming the out castle? with the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. when do I pick this? I, some of them were too late, but I saved a couple so I can use them next Dry year. Them out for the season. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. I just saved a whole corn, oh, yeah, yeah, ear yeah. of corn, and I grew um, beans. They did great. Because the three sisters, yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard yeah, of that. Yeah. yeah, you have. You grow corn, you plant zucchini, and you plant beans underneath the corn because the corn gives nitrogen to the beans, and it shades the zucchini plants. And it's it's like, oh, no, yeah, or maybe it's deep. No, the beans give. grow up to corn store. Right. They have a support. It's really oh, cool. That's, that's a an, uh, Native American yeah, yeah. way of oh. growing uh, crops. It's yeah, really it's cool. Yeah. I have a bunch of herbs and um, it's not very big. It's really not. I have an asparagus thing. Oh, big enough. I, yeah, mean, I have an asparagus patch in the bed. I love That takes asparagus. years. So. Yeah. Yeah. I get like 10, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, look, right there's the asparagus. Oh. <laughs> and I eat it right so away. Right, yeah, it's so it good. Get, so, yeah, it's t- I wish more you know, communities would say, oh, here's an empty plot of land. It's full of broken glass. And a lot of people do that. Clear it out. Put some, yes. And dirt is very important. You know, yeah, the the yeah. garden soil is very important. Put it in there plant something and i think you know it's like that movie um what was that movie if you build it they will come the the dreams yeah (laughs) it's true if you plant it and grow it 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 will come come, yeah Yeah. it's it's, it's wonderful absolutely yeah and and even for seniors or people who can't bend over you make um raised raised beds because yep of the and everything yeah, container, yeah, yeah container gardening yeah. and everything. Yeah, the groundhouse yeah. and chipmunks yard, who had do it on a patio. eat one bite out of things and just leave. I know the yes. squirrels. Oh. <laughs> That's why I have a cat outside. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, but uh, we got a few minutes left. Yeah. And uh, any holidays? Um, uh, not holiday. Um, spring, like things you have to register for coming up, or any. We don't really you know, plan that far ahead. That far ahead. Um, we will, you know, start doing lunch and learns again when the weather improves. Although it doesn't look like we're getting any snow this winter, but hey, who knows? Um, who knows? Yeah. And uh, we'll good. start that again in March. Um, trying to put it all over the county, right? We do that all all summer and all through really through December. It's only a couple months that we don't do it. We will hope to expand our congregate sites. Um, For instance, I don't know how many people come, but in Rosendale, there's like a a big senior complex right up the hill from the rec center, right? So I'd love to bring, you know, go there and, you know, knock on people's uh, doors. Oh, yeah. So we had a movie last week. It was called It Happened on Fifth Avenue. How was that? We talked about that. We weren't familiar with it. I I couldn't even go. Uh, I was so busy that day. But they they had about 40 people sign up. That's cool. Very good. Um, I guess Rosendale redid their theater, but I'm, I'm... Curious to see it. And there's one coming in the spring. I don't know what it is. Probably in March. We kind of avoid January and February because a lot of folks, it's dark, like 430, and people don't want to walk in the gross snow and and stuff. So um, I will say that this generous gift will be added to the generous gift we got from a bank last week. Mid Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union also gave us an unstri- so now we have a, a nice pot of money yes, to be able to do food programs and like I said socialization programs specific programs around the county yeah, so it's going to be great okay. um, and that's really helpful oh and I will say that um, this last month in November we actually got our van together Nina and I were talking about that and we went to Aloha Acres and we sat there all day and the lawyer was in the van and the high cap counselor was in the building and we met people you got a call no one minute oh okay and it was it was great we saw a lot of people and we hope to do that in the spring and through the summer and the fall that's cool good all back together I would love someone with mechanical abilities to be able to clear out the inside because there's stuff in there we don't need because give us more room to meet people i wish it was handicapped accessible i don't know how to do that 
is yours? Yes. How do you how do you do we that? We have a ramp that actually comes oh, down. Oh wow! A, okay. A lift, I should say. A, a lift. lift oh, okay. Down. We don't have that. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we'll have to. We need like seats taken out or something like that. No, yeah. there's an audio testing booth in there. I oh, don't we need that. that too. Yeah, and the there's a huge we'll like apart. counter with a sink. I don't need that either. It used to be a van where they did like medical stuff. So uh, you wash your hands. I, I just want to about that. I can, we, I can, really? I can help you with that. Yeah. Hey, Cameron. Oh, Yay. No there you go. I yeah, have yeah, a trip. Tri Cameron's have a on it. I have a guy. Yeah, that that booth needs. To yeah, go. yeah, yeah. I, a couple of screw guns and a sawzall. I'll get oh, that baby right out yeah. of there. <laughs> exactly. Make it look nice, thank you. too. Yeah, so we'll talk. All right. So, Sue, thank you so much. We thank have to you, go. Sue. Have a wonderful holiday. Thank you, everybody. Yes, it's, a it's, everyone. it's a sunny, terrific Tuesday. Get out there and enjoy. Happy and, New uh, Year. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Yes. All righty, Dan. Thank you, Nina Postapak, Cameron Rye Lance, and Sue Kobenhager for this uh, last um, uh, half hour uh, from the Ulster County Office for the Aging. And it's now uh, 8.59 a.m., and this last portion of Kingston Community Radio was brought to you by Rondell Savings Bank, always working for you in the community with branches in Kingston, West Hurley, and Hyde Park, also online at rondellbank.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. And thank you for sharing the morning with us and participating in Kingston Community Radio KCR. AM 920, 92.5 FM, and our live streaming on mykcr.org. And uh, every weekday from 7 to 9 a.m., and we thank Pamel Broadcasting for giving us this time. Inspired discussions of, by, and for the community, and we thank Nina Postapak and Cameron Rylance for bringing us a terrific Tuesday. And we invite you to be with us tomorrow morning at 8, 7 a.m., until tomorrow, we wish you every success in growing and developing Kingston and all our neighboring communities. We now return you to Magic 92.5.